In this main event, the spotlight has shown brightest on some of the biggest names in the game. Clash of the Titans. Wow. But another top pro remains who knows his play isn't the only way to make some hay. Ladies and gentlemen, Prahlad Friedman. In the main event, ain't been knocked out yet. Friends and fam got another cool sweat. Y'all remember 06, I'll never forget. But it's 09, just might be my time. Cause I'm moving my chips like a wildly vet. Advertising like I am a maniac, ill reads, perfect bets. Well, but a pot or just the minimal. Mixing up my play, whole arsenal, I'm giving them. They all confused, they don't know what to do. They all confused, they don't know what to do. They making an e-skate face, all the you When they stomach make upset, they get nervous, drink oxygen debt. So root for me to beat Ivy, S. Fondiari, and all the donkeys. Get that 85 retirement movies like Spike Lee. Peace, I'm out. That is a tough act to follow, but welcome back to the 40th Annual World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky with Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. There is plenty to rap about in this main event field of 185 with many big-name pros remaining. Been a long time coming, boys. But as day six begins, previously unknown competitors have emerged. Brothers Adam and Dan Bilzerian continue their quest for a family reunion at the final table. I hope I win. <laughs> While a pair of women, Leo Margetz and Nicole Pepe, have gained attention with their play and are seated at table two. And at our feature table, a couple of accomplished pros who have garnered their share of attention in very different ways. Prahlad Friedman burst on the scene in the 2006 main event with a wrap, a near brawl, and a 20th place finish. Tom Schneider, a little less theatrical, was the 07 player of the year. You know when you fall off the wrapping horse, you gotta get right back on it. That's what Prahlad did, and he might be hitting his wrapping stride. Here's the PokerStars.net chip count. South African Warren Zaki leads with almost five million. Tom Schneider sits with three million plus. Some other notable chip counts include Phil Ivey with almost a million four, and the two remaining November Niners, Dennis Phillips and Champ Peter Eastgate, just below the chip average of a million fifty thousand. Big paydays are looming, but of course, winning that main event bracelet is priceless and life-changing. Action begins on Prahlad Friedman on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, Jack Ten of Hearts. In terms of rapping, I've now got to put him ahead of Jeff Madsen, but behind Jay-Z. And he will raise the action to 40,000. Action now on Tom Schneider. On the button, ace eight offsuit. One of his poker goals is to have a million dollar payday. All he needs to do is make the final table here for that to happen. He'll fold that hand. Now over to Finnish pro, 24-year-old Mika Pumalainen, king 10 off. Looks like he's in from out of town. Yeah. And he will make the call for 24,000 more. Mika uses a different razor than Prahlad does. And he will have Friedman dominated. The flop is four queen king. Pumalainen with a pair of kings. Friedman with an up and down straight draw. 185 players left in this main event. One third of them from outside of the U.S., including three from Finland. Pumalainen checks, as does Prahlad. Check. Free look at a turn card as a five of clubs. Pumalainen still ahead with his pair of kings. I like that watch. 55,000. And he bets 55,000. Prahlad almost a five to one underdog here. He's getting three to one on a call, plus he might make more than that if he hits a straight. And he will make the call, oh. looking to hit oh. his draw. So now the river card, another five, Pumalainen with the check mark, he has kings up. I bet you that watch tells good time. I wonder what time zone it's on, though. 130,000 from Pumalainen. Well, I would say Prahlad's time is up here. I'd recommend folding quietly. Where's my white flag? I know I have it here somewhere. Finally, he does surrender, and Pumalainen tacks on a few more chips to his very large stack. I like the watch more than the beard. With his modest chip stack, Prahlad Friedman understands this is a critical day for his main event. One wrong decision could put a wrap on his tournament. Norman, as day six of this 2009 main event gets underway, the field is thinner and the goal is clearer. We are indeed inching ever closer to finding that one person whose life will change forever. And certainly a lot of people out there and some of us in here could really benefit from a life-changing experience. Take Prahlad Friedman, nice fella, good player, bad rapper. 
But listen to what I'm throwing down here, Prahlad. Last a couple of more days, and you won't be known as the shoulda practice avoidance guy. You'll simply be known as one of the November Nine. Keen poker skills become more valuable every hour, which is why Prahlad is such a dangerous player in the main event. Elsewhere, the most dangerous player in the field, regardless of his chip count, Phil Ivey. I've molded him in my image. Look at him. Look at him. He looks like the best player. He is currently watching as a big pot brews between two of the chip leaders. James Aikenhead, currently ninth, just check raised a bet from Steve Beglider, who's in tenth overall. Make it 420. Beglider's going to re raise to 505,000. 90 more calls. Aikenhead's nickname is Sick Dog. He beat me to it. <laughs> Aikenhead needs 290,000 to make the call here. And he does, and we have a pot over a million chips after the flop. Beglider's nickname is Begs. Uh, I never really considered that. <laughs> Turn card now, a tray of spades. Aikenhead first to act. This is small blind against big blind, by the way. Aikenhead raised pre-flop, but since then, Beglider has driven most of the action. Aikenhead checked. Beglider now bets 850000 Aikenhead made a World Series final table last year. You may recall him being runner-up to Grant Hinkle. Beglider works in private equity in New York. James Aikenhead from London will oh. make that call. This is definitely a stimulus pot. So 2.8 million in here. Big stacks, button heads. River card now is a seven of spades. Aikenhead had checked the flop and the turn and checks here on the river. Beglider now checks as well and he shows he made two pair on the end to take this huge pot. It appears Aikenhead was rivered. Wow. I'm living well. Boy, that was a lot of pressure Beglider was applying with middle pair. A pot of nearly three million for Beglider while Aikenhead loses half of his chips. Elsewhere, a powerhouse table includes 05 main event champ Joe Hashem, multiple brace winner JC Tran, and last year's third place finisher Dennis oh my Phillips. God. Tell me it's true. And now Peter Eastgate, the defending champ. Our lives are complete, ladies and gentlemen, please. Well, they have played together earlier in this main event, but now the world champs are side by side. A champion's reunion out there. That should be fun. The Bilzerian brothers have been enjoying their family reunion as well, both still in this thing. That's Adam adding to his chip stack. But at another table, his brother Dan is all in after the flop with ace high against the pocket tens of Jonathan Tamayo. The older of the flying Bilzerian brothers is in trouble. Tamayo, a 23-year-old from Humble, Texas, is still ahead after that turn card. Jonathan Tamayo on the verge of a knockout. Dan Bilzerian has to have an ace on the river. The river card is a king. Tamayo wins the pot and knocks off Dan Bilzerian. One venture capitalist down, one to go. So after being knocked out by Jonathan Tamayo, Dan Bilzerian wins almost $37,000. 180th place, Dan Bilzerian. Oh, no. And word has reached his brother. Adam Bilzerian will now have to go it alone at the main event. But it was remarkable to see this brother duo make their deep run side by side. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOP.com. Sign up for the official WSOP e-newsletter at WSOP.com. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. Time for Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. As main event fields continue to grow, it's common to find yourself at a table with players you don't recognize. In the 05 main event, Jen Harmon had to use her experience to figure out where she stood in the hand early in the tournament. For me, I like to sit down, watch the table. I'd prefer not to have a hand for the first round or two. So when I bet the flop and he called, I thought he might have a flush draw. Harmon and Menick each with ace jack. When I bet the turn when the queen came up and he called, then I figured he had some kind of straight draw or he had a pair. On the river when the king of hearts came up. Menick bets 1,500, putting Harmon to the test early. I was pretty sure that he had the straight, so I was pretty sure it was a chop. Harmon is going to make the call and they turn over identical cards. You just have to go by the hours logged in in your subconscious and hopefully you get it right. Shoot, it's not an easy call, but you can't play like a wuss either and lay down all your all your good hands.
Jen has never cashed in the main event, but with 179 players remaining, there are two women left sitting at the same table. Right now, Leo Margetz is short-stacked in her quest to be the last woman standing, while Nicole Pepe has a little over a million chips. I still don't get it. 6,400 main event entrants, less than 200 are female. Where are all the women? Ace nine of a hearts under the gun for Nicole Pepe. Women generally are smarter than men. I, I guarantee you they can play poker very well if they wish. Where are they? Nicole's aunt Lisa Pepe on the left. Her husband, poker pro Tad Jurgens, also here. Pepe raised to 40000 This is Blair Hinkle, bracelet winner from last year. Part of the Hinkle brothers. Ace jack into the muck. Leo Margetz from Spain. Queen Trey, she'll fold it. You know, women, I believe, are more capable in most areas than men. It's scientifically proven. Bernard Perner, fifth best stack at the beginning of the day, 10-9 offsuit in the big blind, and he makes the call. See, it's a woman against a man. The woman is ahead. And she increases her lead. Pepe flops a pair of aces. Hinkle fold the ace jack. He would have hit top two. Men are stupid. Perner with a pair of tens. He's going to bet his bottom pair, 47000 How many times have you seen this in your life? A man making a mistake involving a woman. <laughs> and a woman right there to correct it. Call. Well, at least calling. Well, how many times have you seen that? The woman's got the man right where she wants him. Turn card is a seven. Each player with the same gut shot straight draw, but Pepe still leads. Here comes Perner again. Men are slow learners. 82000 into the pro from Southern yeah. California. And now a raise to 302,000. The woman's in control. It's like real life. <laughs> Pepe's supporters looking on a bit nervously here. And this is the part of the day when the little light goes off in the man's head and he says to himself, I am an idiot. <laughs> Perner gives up his hand and Pepe will take that pot. There it is. I, I told you, don't lot. feel, I, I told you I can't stop him. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Nicole Pepe and her supporters starting off on the right foot early here on day six. <laughs> Women, you can't live with them. You can't bet them off their hand. All right, out in the field, another player who's got it going in the right direction, Steve Beglider, called an all-in with Ace Jack, leaving Bradley Craig at risk with pocket fives. The flop now is queen 10-6. Pocket fives are good, but Beglider with a gut shot. Yeah, Beglider just picked up four more outs. More Turn go. card is one no help go. for Beglider. Craig Deuce. looking to dodge an ace, king, Deuce. or jack to stick around. The river yes. card is a six, and Bradley Craig will win that hand a double up. <laughs> Craig still has some work to do with only 30 big blinds to play with, but it feels good. A very good double up for Craig right there. At the table of death on the river, Joe Hashem needs 60,000 to call the bet from Dennis Phillips. You gotta know about ace king here, right? You gotta know that when your jack queen got there, huh? Phillips mute. You're too smart. You would fold if you missed. Ashram's going to lay Mark down answer. his ace king. Hand him the deck. Let him pick any card he wants. Phillips shows a full house. Sneaky SOV. Check, check him to me, huh? I was hoping. Trying to get to let you catch up a little. I thought we heard Dennis Phillips say earlier in the main event that he never shows his cards unless he's called. He lied. <laughs> Back to the featured table now. Six players in the hand heading to the turn. Six players? What, suddenly we're playing bingo? Clayton Newman's the best of the bunch with pocket tens. Also in the hand, Mika Pumalainen. Oh, 68. He has a pair of nines. Schneider favored with flush and straight draws. If we covered up any more of the screen, this would be radio. <laughs> All right, the turn card is an eight of spades. Schneider adds a pair of eights. Pumalainen, top pair with those nines and top kicker. Newman still has the best made hand with his two tens. Pumalainen first to act. And he's reaching, he'll try to thin this field. That's 140,000. Scott Citron folds, Michael Jansen gets out of the way. B13. <laughs> Clayton Newman with his pocket tens makes the call. I29. Schneider behind, but with two big draws, makes the call. Paul Johnson folds. N44. Tens against nines against eights. River card is a five. Newman and his pocket tens get the check mark. I23. Pumalainen, first to act. G51. Pumalainen's two nines, but he checks. All in. 
Bingo! All Newman in. goes all in, but players, don't turn your cards in just yet. There's a lot of beards at this table. There's a beard. Schneider with two busted draws and a pair of eights. There's a beard. Prolot's got one. Well, it's a goatee, close enough. Schneider folds. There's a scraggly beard, but it's the beard across the way that has the best hand. Kumalainen thinking about it. G53. He gives it up. Lays it down. <laughs> Newman wins the pot. What does he win? Over a million chips in that pot. Good bet. I think I had you. Quite the opposite, Tom. Clayton Newman was best wire to wire with pocket tens, and that's why he's stacking everyone else's chips. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the main event at the Rio. You can see the room continues to thin out as we get closer towards naming our 09 November 9. Phil Ivey involved in a hand. Just made a 180,000 pre-flop re-raise to Ann Van Wynn, who made the call. The flop is 6-5-6. Six, six. Elio Lezra says Ivey makes good reads, but people overlook how patient he is waiting for the right spot. Ivey makes a bet of a quarter million. Win makes a quick call. I think one of the reasons Phil is so patient is he doesn't like to play a lot of hands when he's eating an apple. Queen of spades on the turn. When you play a hand while you're eating, you usually have something pretty good. Ivy makes it 330,000 to stick around. And takes a bite. Win is not eating, but I think he's hungry. He is folding, and Ivy proving even one-handed he's better than most. Hard to bet with this apple here, huh? <laughs> Yeah, isn't it hard to also talk while you're eating the apple? Phil starting day six in the right direction, unlike day five, which was a true grind for the seven-time Bracet winner who's never won the main event. On the tournament ticker, you see only Eric Seidel owns more bracelets without a main event win. If Ivy were to win this, boy, you can put him right up with the names of Moss, Chan, Brunson, and Helmut. Some might trade all their bracelets for the only ones owned by Hashem and Eastgate. They're looking on as two-time bracelet winner J.C. Tran makes a small raise. This is the fourth time Tran has cashed in the main event in six years. Phillips folds. I'll take the small one, guys. Don't worry. I'll take the small one. You guys can take the big one. We got two ex-war champs and a future war champ. What a table. <laughs> Peter Eastgate's victory last year still fresh in everyone's mind, and for Tran, it strengthened his desire to one day share the experience of being a world champion. You don't even have to be a poker player to feel the energy. Yes! Ah! And this is the championship. This is the main show. If you're going to bring out your best game, this is the time to do it. Peter Eastgate is our 2008 main event champion. Last year, I was fortunate enough to have a friend at the final table, and I was there watching it. And when I was there, I, I was like envisioning myself sitting at one of those seats. And I was like, wow, this is a great feeling. So now, you know, I look around, I'm like, I can do this. I mean, I feel like I'm a better player than the majority of these guys at the table. I said, you remember that feeling you had last year when you were watching these guys play? Well, you can actually be there. So fight harder, play harder, and you will get there. I picture holding up that bracelet. I picture playing heads up with all the cameras, with all the spectators, all my friends and family watching. And, uh, you know, hopefully that dream can come true this year. Tran finished 117th at the 2004 main event, then finished 117th at the 05 main event. That's very, very hard to do. At the feature table, it's time for the Jack Lane's Beef Jerky wild card hand. Norman, you're on a wild card rush. Good luck this time. Yeah, but since I began trying to figure out the wild card hand line, I have gotten no offers from anyone looking for a poker coach. Clayton Newman has the wild card hand. He is under the gun, plus one. You mean UTG plus one? Yes, Lon. UTG plus one. Congratulations. A raise to 40,000. Well, Newman's a poker coach of sorts. From early position, I'm going to put him on ace, king, or ace, queen. Tom Schneider with pocket jacks. It's impossible to play pocket jacks right, we have found out. You are correct, sir. He calls for 40,000. I would have raised there, though, to see if Newman's got a hand. Dwayne Stacy, 31-year-old steel worker from England with pocket fives in the big blind. Steel worker, that's another job I can't do. He makes a call, so three players will see a flop. The flop is 9-9 nine, nine ace. Schneider with jacks up now. Stacy also with two pair, nines and fives. And I think the ace might have hit Newman. He's got ace king or ace queen. Stacy first to act. And he checks. Clayton Newman now. He checks. Well, with the two clubs out there, I can't believe Newman has an ace. He would have bet it. 
Scary board for everyone. And Schneider checks. Well, now I'm thinking Newman has pocket tens or maybe pocket eights and just doesn't like that board. Turn card, six of diamonds. Two flush draws out there now, but I don't think Newman's on a draw. Stacy with his nines and fives. Check. He checks. Newman went to the University of Georgia for a couple of years studying business. And now it makes 55, it 55,000. Well, I'm officially waving the white flag line. <laughs> I have no idea what Newman has. It's possible Newman thinks we're playing Omaha. If I'm Tom Schneider, I'm confused. If Newman had an ace in his hand, I gotta believe he would have bet the flop. And it doesn't seem possible <laughs> Newman has a nine in his hand. Schneider oh. with his pocket jacks and the nines on board makes a call. Oh. Stacy will be folding. Stacy folds, but that does not count as a win for you. I yet. got that right though. No, I'm sorry. Heads up to the river. Newman and Schneider. River card is a deuce. Schneider left with his jacks up. Well, as usual, the deuce changes nothing. I'm still waving the white flag, and I've got to go to the bathroom, but I'm going to stick around and see what Newman has. Newman checks now. I'm confused. Schneider as confused as you or I. Are his pocket jacks good? He's wondering, does Newman have an ace? Uh, check. Check. He checks. Uh, Newman shows pocket sixes for a turned full boat. A full boat? Newman might have been trying to check raise, but sometimes you got to do your own bidding on the river. Newman wins the Jack Link Speed Jerky Wild Card Hand. Schneider trying to figure out a way to beat the young buck. Let's get back to table two here at the Rio. Leo Margetz is a spectator once again. She's watching after Nicole Pepe flopped a pair of kings with an ace kicker to lead Hack Dang, who also flopped top pair, but with a weaker kicker. Over a half million in the pot. Turn card is a seven. Hack Dang still second best. Pepe had raised pre-flop and bet the flop. She checks the turn. Dang now, a pro from Virginia, bets 150,000. Dang feels comfortable now with Kings up and a good kicker. Pepe is going to raise the action to 350,000 now. Yeah, the check raise usually means a hand. And as you can see from the percentages, Dang is way behind. Now he's got the big king. It's not big enough. Oh. But he does make the call for 200,000 more. Dang's in deep. Pepe's played it beautifully. River card now. And Dang spikes the queen and gets there with top two. That is just one ugly looking river card for Pepe. Pepe first to act and she checks. Dang now. God, I'm like the worst poker player ever. This is gonna look terrible on TV. No, I'm the worst poker player, Mr. Dang, and I know about looking terrible on TV. <laughs> I'm sure I'm supposed to bet this. I'll, I'll check. Check, check. Your yeah, king-queen's good. I have ace-king. Pepe knew exactly what he had. Sorry. <laughs> Hack Dang seems embarrassed about winning the hand, but he'll happily take Nicole's deposit into his stack, but Pepe's check on the river saved her from losing even more chips. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rio and the 2009 main event, still led by Warren Zaki, the first player over five million chips. What a rush he's been on. Steve Beglider has moved up to fourth and young Matt Affleck still among the top 10. And the chip leader looks to be getting stronger. You may recall Zaki owns a plumbing supply company in South Africa. And you may have noticed the name Darvin Moon on the leaderboard in fifth place. Well, there he is, the 44-year-old logger from Oakland, Maryland, in a hand with 24-year-old Ben Lamb. River card comes out. It's a nine of diamonds. Lamb first to act. The Vegas Poker Pro checks. Now Moon moves out 500,000 chips. It's possible Moon made that bet with his eyes closed. I mean, I'd have to call him because I'm not even sure he knew how much he bet. <laughs> Lamb will lay it down. Darvin Moon will take that nice pot. Darvin uh, woke up in time to drag the pot. He is now over four million and has moved into third place. Meanwhile, at another table, Phil Ivey has also been moving up the leaderboard, but is a spectator in this hand as Bradley Craig and his pocket tens try to eliminate Tahir Ali Sheik holding King Queen off. The flop now is 9-8 Jack. Craig adds an up and down straight draw. Ali Sheik though has a gut shot to a better straight. Turn card is a deuce, no help to Ali Sheik. Craig's still good. Ali Sheik needs a River King or a 10 for a straight, or he or is deuce. wamboozled. River card. 
is a four of clubs, and Bradley Craig will win that hand again and knock off Tahir Ali Sheik in 165th place. Craig has nearly tripled up today, is only about 100,000 shy of the chip average, but his chip count doesn't do justice to his improbable main event story. I should never really even be in the tournament. At the end of day one, I had 400 chips left. You just sit there and it's that moment of dejection that you just don't want to feel. You're sitting there, you're looking down, you have four chips left in front of you. I'm figuring my main event's over. Some people give up, and I never really gave up. I won a pot, and then you win another pot, and then next thing you know, you got 15,000, 30,000, and then by the end of day two, I had 100,000. Yes! You're going to deal with adversity, especially in a tournament that's eight days long. You can't just give up on the tournament because you lose a pot. You so I got 10 minutes to survive. A chip in a chair, you just never know what can happen. They all matter to me right now. I almost feel like I'm charmed to be here. You know, you start to believe that there's something going on that you're like almost meant to be here. So yeah, I do feel like there's a little bit of fate involved and a little bit of destiny involved that I'm here. Actually, a lot of fate and destiny going for Craig. He wouldn't even be playing poker full time, except he got laid off from his job as a financial planner eight months ago. Back to the feature table, the top stack among the nine, and six overall is Tom Schneider. He has increased his chip stack today, as has Prahlad Friedman, yet he is below the chip average of almost 1.2 million. And action begins on Friedman, nine, eight of spades. The name Prahlad comes from Hindu mythology, known for devotion to the supreme god Vishnu. He raises to 40,000. Very good knowledge, Norman. I went to Maryland. Action folded to Pumalainen with... Pocket Jacks. The name Mika, fairly common in Finland, sort of like the name Norman in American intellectual circles. <laughs> and oh. with the Jacks, just makes the call. Action folds to the big blind, Clayton Newman. He'll lay it down, so it'll be heads up. Mika's favorite poker player is fellow Finn Patrick Antonius. Good choice. Pumalainen and Friedman. The flop, 6-8 king. Pumalainen's Jacks are best. Friedman picked up a pair of eights. Prahlad first to act, that's 80,000. 80,000. Prahlad likes middle pair. Mika a bit wary of that king. You know, pocket jacks should be banned from poker line. They're impossible to play. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Pumalainen makes the call. Turn card is a jack. I love pocket jacks. <laughs> a set for Pumalainen. Well, every once in a while, pocket jacks finds a friend on the board and a Jack on the turn makes Pocket Jack smile. <laughs> Friedman check. Check. Pumalainen check. Slow check, play in the set. It's a little sneaky on the Prahlad. River card now is a 9-2 pair for Prahlad. That might cost him. Yeah, Prahlad Friedman might think he has something now. Possible flush or straight out there. Friedman will act with 200,000. Prahlad leads out with 200,000. Mika sitting on the winner. I'm on him. Yep. All in. That would put Prahlad all in. Oh, I had a feeling I should have checked. This is for all his chips. If Prahlad calls here, his main event is over. The problem for Prahlad, he had just bet about half his remaining stack. He'd have less than 15 big blinds left if he folds here. Once you are under 20 big blinds, you are unofficially short stacked. Must have it. It'd be so sick if I folded the winner here. That would be so incredibly sick. He's got two pair and lays him down. Uh, he would have been sicker if he called. That hand would have broke him. Well played by Mika. And he did put a hurt on Prahlad. <laughs> River two pair. He made the right fold, but Prahlad's tortured about it. I guess poker's not always fun for everyone. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio, where the main event is now down to 162 players, which includes only one Bill Zarian. Adam outlasted his brother Dan, now in a hand with Joel Patchell, who missed the flop. Bill Zarian leads with a pair of fives and a straight draw. He checked. Patchell now bets 90,000. Patchell graduated from Emory University. I believe they are the Raging Cajuns. Bill Zarian now is going to raise to 245,000. Good read by Bilzerian. Patchell has squat douche. I'm on. Well, I knew you'd do that. Boy, I didn't know he was going to do that. With nothing, Patchell pushes, and this would be for all of Bilzerian's chips. I think I might have to gamble with you here. <laughs> I mean, I'm fairly weak, but... I'm 
pretty sure I'm around like 40% here. You're much better than that. If that's the case, I think we're gonna have to dance. Tough spot for Adam. If, if Patchell's got an overpair or a set, he would be crushed here. All right, I call. Calling in call. He Let's makes the call. I had nothing. I knew, yes. Wow, what a call by oh. Bilzerian. Yeah, tremendous call by Adam Bilzerian for all his chips. Turn card is at 10, Bilzerian still best. Patchell can still eliminate Bilzerian with a river jack or nine. And the river card is a king, and with a pair of fives, Bilzerian takes that huge pot. What a pot for Bilzerian, and what a call. Patchell got caught making a move. Bilzerian is the beneficiary, doubling up to almost 2.3 million. All right, let's get back to the feature table. Prahlad Friedman moving in the wrong direction. Short stack, just over 300,000. Tom Schneider, still over 3 million. What's your name? Jesse Halbach. That's Jesse Halbach, just joining this table. He's a student at the University of North Dakota. He's tough, man. You gotta stay away from Prahlad, that's for sure. Better, better poker player than he is a rapper, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've heard that a few times. It was 2006 when Prahlad unveiled his Poker is Fun rap, and while the lyrics were memorable, it was another incident from that year that made him infamous. I saw him throw the ante in. He says he did, you know, I don't necessarily believe him. It was just a bunch of silliness that went down. At the time, I thought Jeffrey Lissandro didn't put his ante in. So if he threw the ante out, he just gets robbed. So I think he really got upset when I said, what if this kid got robbed? If I knew for sure you think I'm gonna rob him for 5,000, you idiot. He probably didn't appreciate, you know, being called a thief or whatever. That really upset him. I'm acting like an idiot, all right? And then we both egged each other on. And I don't trust you, sir. Are you gonna stop? And it kind of blew up like that. He's not even his chip. I thought he might swing one at me. I'll take your head off, buddy. I thought I was gonna have to do a little, a little bob and weave there or something. Just and I saw him a while back, and I was like, no hard feelings, and you know, he gave like a little smile. And I even joke about it sometimes. I'm like, make sure you guys put your annies in, I'm on you. Prahlad's big mistake was telling Lissandro, I don't trust you. That's pretty much telling him he's a cheater, and I thought Lissandro was gonna take a swing at him. On the Jack Link's beef jerky pocket cam, Prahlad Friedman with pocket eights. Prahlad recovered from anti-gate to finish 20th in the 06 main event, but Great. Lissandro outlasted him finishing 17th. A raise to 40,000 from Friedman. Schneider with 10 to 6 into the muck. Now on our new player here at this feature table, Jesse Haubach with ace raise. 6. Raise. Haubach grew up in McVille, North Dakota, population 470. He announces a re-raise. Haubach wants to make a strong first impression, makes it 125,000. Action folding back around to Prahlad. Prahlad started this hand with about 300,000 chips. He's got to be thinking of pushing them all in right here. And that's exactly what he does. So Halbach needs 144,000 more to call. Now Halbach, with the weak ace, pretty much priced in to making the call here. 144, correct. Call. Right, and he does to put Prahlad Friedman at risk, but Prahlad in pretty good shape. Pocket ace for Prahlad, ace of diamonds. And he sees he's up against just one over. Yeah, Prahlad likes it a lot. Prahlad in a good mood. Let's see if the uh, flop changes that at all. All right, so Halbach with a chance to knock off a very strong player here from the main event. The flop is queen, queen, five. The pocket eights of Friedman survive so far. Prahlad pumping his fist a little. This could be prelude to a new rap. <laughs> I hope not. Turn card now. Is a four of spades. Friedman's still good. And now Jesse Halbach can only knock out Prahlad Friedman with an ace on the river. Out of history. The river card is a 10, and Prahlad Friedman doubles up. Prahlad's pocket eights are good. He'll be back under his hood. <laughs> uh, not even too much of a sweat either. No, it wasn't too bad. Pretty lucky. No counterfeit type scenarios. A good result for Prahlad Friedman, and one of the strongest pros in the field is just a double up away from chip average.
back at the Rio if the remaining 150 players think it's been stressful so far. Hang around a couple of more days, then check your blood pressure. Pallad Friedman knows all about that. Looks down at King Trey. Rags. And folds him. Give myself a rest from some making yeah, decisions. From the stress, yeah. It's going to sit this one out. Tom Schneider now with pocket nines. Schneider, a former CPA and finance professional. His wife encouraged him to leave the corporate world to play poker full time. A raise to almost three times the big blind. Paul Johnson now, a 50-year-old attorney from Dallas with 9-8 of spades. Johnson's nickname is Doc. I am reminded of what novelist oh. Nelson Algren once wrote. Never play cards with a man named Doc. Never eat at a place called Mom's. Never sleep with a woman whose troubles are worse than your own. Norman, could you find a woman whose troubles are worse than yours? Good for you. <laughs> Paul Johnson called with 9-8 of spades. Mika Pumalainen with pocket eights makes the call as well. Dwayne Stacy now in the big blind. Queen 10 suited. Stacy finished 97th in the main event last year. A steel worker. And he's putting some chips together, and he's going to re raise it now to 130,000. Wow, from the big blind, he's going to try to steal this baby. I like it. Schneider with his nines from middle position. And a re-raise. He pops it to 345,000. I like that even more. The attorney, Johnson, gets out of the way. Pocket eights of Puma Linen. Mika can't play. Two players raise behind him. Yeah, he does get out of the way. Now Stacy with his suited queen 10 and a big raise back to him. Yeah, if I'm Stacy, I don't think I can play either. Schneider, as you mentioned, was in middle position. He raised and re-raised. Smells like a huge hand. Stacy does fold it, and pocket nines in no man's land will win that hand. And Tom's wife, Julie, in the background loves that. You got some uh, family? What's that? You got some family in the crowd? My wife. Oh, nice. Yeah. She's actually a poker player, too. Cool. Prahlad's wife, Dee Long, is also a poker pro. Julie Schneider made a final table at this year's World Series, and those two admit they are very competitive with each other about poker. I'm very competitive with my wife uh, about breakfast. To the outer tables, a couple of former champs tangling in a hand. Peter Eastgate made a raise under the gun. Beware of racing Hashem's blind. Joe makes the call. Hashem once was a chiropractor. Eastgate once was a teenager. Deuce, eight, five, couple of clubs. Hashem checks, Eastgate checks. Turn card is another deuce. Hashem now will bet at 40,000. And Peter comes along. Eastgate calls almost as quickly as Hashem bets. River card now is a king, a third club on board. 120. Hashem will bet 120,000. Quick call. And Hashem will show pocket fives for a full house. And Eastgate mucks. Hashem takes the pot. And that will be a small pot for Joe Hashem and an askew face for Peter Eastgate. So two struggling champs, one past, one present, side by side. Hashem the better of the pair for the time being. All right, let's get back to table two. Leo Margetz still has not been able to find much to work with, nursing that short stack. Nicole Pepe, though, finding herself in another hand. She has pocket fours against Adam York's ace-queen offsuit as we head to the flop. York, a 24-year-old British poker pro. He finished 114th in last year's main event. The flop is eight trade jack. Pepe's small pocket pair still in front. And she checks it. She's going to wait on a little more information. York with ace-queen. All in. And he is going to move all in. That is ugly. It might work, but it's ugly. All air on the flop, and he goes all in. Pepe needs 247,000 to call. She takes a better look at that board. Not a monster or nothing, all right? Pepe's reads have been dead on. And look at him. He's got squad douche and a striped shirt. Mm -hmm. no, I'm wishing I would have folded. All right, I call. Nicole makes a call to put York at risk. He needs help to double up. Good read by Pepe. He's a ace king. And he shows almost ace king, ace queen. Nice call. Thank you. Pepe trying to add all of York's chips to her stack. And Camp Pepe perched in the bleachers waiting to cheer. The LA Pro has been playing some good poker here. Turn card now five, no help to York. York starting to pack up for the trip home. Nicole enjoying the moment with her Aunt Lisa. Pepe looking for the knockout. York needs an ace or a queen. River card, oh, is the queen! Saved on the river is Adam York. 
very nice call, really. It's like amazing. Like Margette said, it was a great call. It's not working out so well for me. But <laughs> Good call, it's all right. It's all right, you can do it, you'll get it back. A strong play by Nicole, but it doesn't pan out. Poker, sucks. A bad beat will put you in a bad mood, a cruel game indeed. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOP.com. Get official items for your home poker game at WSOP.com. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. Back at the Rio, where only about 2% of the original field remains, and that includes Adam Bilzerian holding a pair of fives with flush and straight draws against John Martin and his pocket nines and a straight draw of his own. Martin bets 350000 on the turn to Adam Bilzerian. And after his recent double up, he's going to put the heat to Martin's feet. Martin, a computer consultant from Pasadena, California, a tough decision with just a pocket pair. Can't fold. I call. He yeah. makes the call to put himself at risk. Okay. Six, that good call. Six, About a two million chip pot here. Martin all in. Bilzerian can knock him out with a four, five, nine, or any spade. River card is a jack of hearts, and Martin doubles up through Adam Bilzerian, who got greedy and paid the price. And Bilzerian sees a lot of his chips go across the table. Yeah, Norman, that does negate his recent double up. He did lose about half his stack right there. Let's take a look at the chip count. Warren Zaki still leads the race for the eight and a half million dollar top prize. Tom Schneider at our feature table holding steady. The chip average about 1.3 million. Back to Phil Ivey's table where his cheering section, Mel and Pat Humphreys can always be found. Phil was dealt pocket aces and he will see a flop with Steve Beglider and his pocket nines. And the flop is Queen Trey Queen. Ivy with aces up and the big advantage, he checks. Big Lighter bets 100,000. I'm sorry, some equity dude in shades is gonna outplay my man? Go get him, Phil. Ivy with the call. Thank you. Turn card now. Four of clubs brings Ivy closer to winning this hand. Let's go get him, Phil. A check, check. All right, get him on the river. River card is another Trey. Ivy with a check mark. Phil, we're good. Yeah, that's a good bet. 275,000. And a quick call. And Ivy shows his aces, beg lighters, nines will lose. Hey, hey, buddy, this isn't some boardroom where you can broker some deal with a phone call to a second cousin. <laughs> this is Phil Ivy's main event. And his fan club has plenty to cheer about. Back to the feature table where Prahlad Friedman is below the chip average right now. He's having to play the patience game. He can't afford to splash around too much at this point. From a bathroom perspective, these levels are like a half an hour too long. Just from that perspective, yeah. You gotta just never drink anything. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the player to fear is always the dehydrated player. <laughs> Action begins on Paul Johnson in early position, enjoying his first World Series cash. With Ace Jack. Johnson doesn't look like an attorney to me. And then again, Raised I don't look 40, like an astute poker analyst. Raised to 40,000. The Ace Jack's going nowhere. Clayton Newman lays it down. Friedman with a weak ace. The Ace Four is really going nowhere. He mucks. Tom Schneider now in the big blind. A big ace, Ace King. Oh, ace King. That looks like it should go somewhere, somewhere good. But Schneider just calls. He might be trying to trap Johnson if he puts him on a weaker ace. So Johnson and Schneider to the flop. Schneider with a bigger ace. And there is an ace. Let the games begin. That's just what Tom Schneider was looking for. See, ace jack is like ace queen with fleas. It's just trouble. Schneider will check his ace king. Schneider might be looking to check raise here. Johnson bets 75,000. Ace jack looks pretty good, but it's a one-way ticket to Palookaville. It seems like Schneider was setting this up as a trap. Boy, that smooth call pre-flop looks real good right now. And Schneider will check raise with that bigger ace, ace to 275,000. Schneider with the check raise means Johnson should be asking for the check. All in, all in with all the in. ace jack from Johnson. Now he all just went all in for nearly a million. Schneider has him covered easily. I call. 
Yep, and has call. to call. Call. Johnson in danger of this being his last main event hand. Ace King of Hearts for Tom. Yeah. Ace Johnson Jack sees the sad fate call. of Ace Jack. Yeah. Tom Schneider poised to get stronger. Turn card. It is a 10, and Schneider still good. And now Paul Johnson will need a jack and a jack only, or his main event is over. And the river card is a tray. Schneider wins the hand with a big erase, eliminating Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson started that hand with 80 big blinds. Now he has none. Julie Schneider is thrilled and with good reason. Her husband Tom is a force to be reckoned with as we move closer towards the November 9. Man, I haven't seen this much muscle sitting around one table since The Godfather. <laughs> Wake up. Tell me you've been going out every night. Yeah, I've been, until the main event. Not until the main event do I become a party animal. I got 10 hours of sleep last night, man. I feel like sleeping there. <laughs> Action begins on J.C. Tran on the Jackling Speed Jerky Pocket Cam. He's got 10-8, and he will not play that. Over to Hashem now with Ace King off suit. 55. Raised raise to 55,000. The blinds at 10 and 20,000. East Gate, Queen 8. He'll lay it down. Ty Tran now with Pocket Kings, the 22-year-old from Houston. Tran used to be a waiter at a sushi restaurant. Customers kept complaining that the fish was uncooked, so he started playing more poker. <laughs> Tran with a big re-raise of 305000 On the button is the fourth biggest stack in the room, Billy Cop. Rags. And those rags go into the muck. Now Dennis Phillips, last year's third place finisher, Queen Trey. Rags. And he knows what to do with those. Well, what's Joe Hashem going to do with Ace King and 600,000 chips in front of him? They're a monster. Mm -hmm. Me too. I got a real monster. No, Tran's got the real monster. You have an ace and a king. I don't know. Thing is, I can't call, right? right? I've either got to push all in or I've got to fold. That, my stomach, it's not feeling too good. Give you a little belly rub. <laughs> be right. I believe it's one player per belly. <clears throat> Well, as Hashem told us, does he want to risk his main event in this spot? It doesn't, doesn't feel right. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. Joe's going to give it up. Just fall. I make the wrong race. I'm at the feature table. I'm nervous. I make the wrong race. Far out. <clears throat> Can I give myself high five? I'm not fond of the self high five. Despite the overbet, Tran almost hooked a world champ at Hashem, released Ace King, and will continue another deep main event run. At this stage of the main event, we usually find more big-name pros on the golf course than in the Rio poker room. But this year, the field is still full of names like Ivy, Esfandiari, Prahlad, Schneider, and more. If I can borrow one of your lines, Norman, I am stoked. Well, I'm going to outstoke you just thinking about this feature table. Dennis Phillips and Peter Eastgate are hoping to make back-to-back -back final tables. Eastgate and Joe Hashem are hoping to become two-time main event champions. Hey, I love the unknowns, but give me the big boys a cold brew in my beanbag chair, and I am one happy railbird. Quite a treat to have two champs sitting side by side this late in the main event. It's been 21 years since Johnny Chan repeated as world champ. Peter Eastgate still has that opportunity. Let's take a look at some chip counts brought to you by PokerStarts.net. Among the notable stacks in the room, Tom Schneider with almost 2.8 million, Phil Ivey approaching 2 million, and the biggest stacks in the room include Darvin Moon with almost 4 million. The overall leader is Warren Zaki with over 5 million. Warren in a hand right now, but he's behind holding pocket tens against the all-in aces of Ian Tavelli after a flop of 7-6-8. The chip leader risking 20% of his stack on this all-in call. Another six on the turn. Tavelli with aces up. Zaki can still knock out Tavelli with a river 10 or 9. It is a queen on the river, and Zaki will lose that hand and give up almost 1 million chips and ship them over to the 21-year-old student at Arizona State. Lucky, I guess. Despite that setback, the South Africans still clinging to the chip lead. Elsewhere, 2007 Player of the Year Tom Schneider has a very big stack. He's about to see a river card with Adam Bilzerian on a board of Queen-10 for Trey. Schneider's had one of the bigger stacks in the room for quite a while. The remaining Bilzerian brother has a more modest stack. There is Tom's wife, Julie, a good player in her own right. River card now is a five of spades. Was either one on a flush draw. Bilzerian checks. 
Tom Schneider checks back. So let's see the cards. Bilzerian shows pocket eights, and I guess that's good enough. Schneider mucks. Maybe you gotta smile, cheer up. You're gonna have so many chips, we'll have three people stacking up. Let's go. Yeah, I'd be scratching my head too, Tom. All right, over to Leo Margetz of Spain, one of the final two women left in the main event. She is short stacked and being very selective. At the same table, the only other woman left, Nicole Pepe of Long Beach, California. She's in a three-way pot after the flop with Tommy Vitas and Bernard Perner. Pepe's checked. Vitas, a 37-year-old poker pro who lives here in Las Vegas. Perner, a 36-year-old from Austria who got beat up a bit earlier in the main event in a few hands against Phil Ivey. Vitas just bet 230,000. The Austrian, Bernard Perner, lays it down. Now Nicole Pepe. Come on, Lynn. Moves all in. Pepe's run into some bad luck and has been bleeding chips. The 30-year-old pro makes her stand here. Vitas will need over a half million chips to call, but he will lay it down. And so Nicole Pepe will take her chips back in a bunch from Vitas and Perner. Cheering for Nicole is her aunt Lisa Pepe and husband Tad Jurgens, also a poker pro. Tad and Nicole met at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles. When I go to the bike, I only meet people who take my money, and I never get their name. <laughs> to our other featured table. Table two now, and a double bracelet winner from this year so far, Phil Ivey. Phil looks down at a jack. Second card's a king. Phil Ivey is so good, he could win wearing striped pants. <laughs> now he raises to 54,000 on Steve Beglider. Eight, seven of diamonds in the small blind. Beglider, formerly a top executive at Bear Stearns before its demise, now works at a private equity firm. He calls for 44,000 more. Here's the flop. Nine, ace, six. Ivy's still ahead with King Jack. Beglider, an up and down straight draw, and he checks. Ivy puts together 80,000. Ivy with the standard continuation bet. The amateur, Beglider now. Beglider with the standard private equity call. Turn card now. Trey of spades. Neither has paired up. Beglider first to act. He checks. All right, Phil. Now let's crush this equity pretender. Oh, Phil checks. That's the non-continuation check line. <laughs> River card is a queen. Ivy gets the check mark with king high. Now neither guy has anything. Beglider is going to take a shot. 175,000 into Phil Ivey. Beglider boldly going where no man should go, trying to outplay the great Phil Ivey with a river bluff. Good luck, sir. Phil does have nothing, but his nothing's better than the equity guy's nothing. Does Phil know that, though? Phil's going to lay it down. I had to shield my eyes, Lon. I, I couldn't watch someone out Ivy, Ivy. The amateur Beglider made a perceptive and preemptive bet at Phil Ivy, forcing the pro to fold. I'm sure Phil is thinking, don't get cocky. Those chips are only on loan. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. 40th Annual Memories. Oh, my favorite personal memory of the World Series of Poker was the four of clubs on the river against Steve Dannemann in the final hand of the 2005 World Series. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! In the heat of battle, you're so focused on what you're there to do that the bells and whistles don't actually go off just yet. It takes a good hour. You're kind of in the car going back and you're holding the bracelet and you're thinking, wow, is this real? To me, it was a feeling of calm. It was almost as if it was my destiny. Joe Hashem still alive in this main event as he tries to upgrade his resume by winning a second title. You won in 05, right? Yeah, we were there, Lon. I think I predicted Phil Ivey to win that year. Some average Joe, right? Some guy with a, with a loud... Uh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> you know what? I didn't even know you and I was rooting for you. What, final table? Really? Asham clearly has the respect of top poker pros, J.C. Tran included. There is the 2009 version of the World Championship bracelet waiting for November 10th when one of our remaining 139 players will claim it. 
Chip average right now about 1.4 million. Warren Zaki still the top dog. To the outer tables and a very calm looking Joe Seabock faced with a 45,000 chip bet from French poker pro Fabrice Soulier. Come on. And Joe moves all in. This is Seabock's first deep run in the main event. Soulier needs almost 300,000 to call. He's got 300,000 alone in the second floor atrium. I fold. You got it. He's going to give it up, and Seabock will take that pot. Thanks, bud. Seabock made two final tables at his first World Series in 2005. <laughs> Since then, he just kind of walks around being good looking. And then there's his buddy, Gavin good Smith, check. who just walks around. It's just 500,000. <laughs> Falling on hard times, my friend. It's not hard times. Hard times being the guy walking around checking out his friends. Gavin does a lot of that. Gavin is Joe's co-host from Poker Road Radio. All right, to another table. There's Elke Grosbellier, the former chip leader, trying to break a dry spell that has hit him in the last day or so. Elke and Fernando Gordo each with top pair, top kicker, but they're against Scott Cook, who flopped a set of fives. Elke and Gordo have got to love their hands, but either one could lose a whole lot of chips here. Gordo bet the flop, called by the other two. Here's the turn card, another tray. I really like Cook's chances here, Norman. Both Elke and Gordo are drawn dead to the case king. Gordo will bet, though, a quarter million with kings up. Gros Bellier, same hand, same commitment. Cook now with his full house, just a smooth call. I thought the 98% hand might put in 100% of his chips there. River card, eight of diamonds, Cook with a check mark. Gordo checks. Gordo gets cautious. Elke checks as well. Give it to him, Cook. I can't do it. You can't oh, do it? Really Cook just checks. Elke and Gordo show two pair, but Cook turns over the winner. Wow. What a scaredy cat. Maybe Cook was afraid of King's full. I don't know, but he had a chance to knock out two players there, including one of the best left in the field. <laughs> and so Cook will take all those chips. Elke stuck in a funk and spiraling down. Back to the high octane featured table now. Norman, I'm still in awe of Peter Eastgate, who's alive in his back to back quest. And he handles himself so well, one likable 23 year old. Action will start on Billy Cop, one of the top five chip stacks in the room, a student at the University of Kentucky, pocket aces. And he studies hospitality management and tourism, so he's in the right place here at the Rio. A raise to 52,000. Dennis Phillips with a couple of black fours. I think Dennis has studied hospitality management his whole life. Phillips calls for 52,000. Nasser El Nasser with pocket queens. Bad time for pocket queens. He made a World Series final table this year. And with pocket queens, El Nasser putting together some chips. That's more than 52. He re-raises to 225,000. The sound of that raise is music to Billy Cop's ears. So it's folded back to Cop with aces. And he will re-pop it to 558,000. Dennis Phillips says, my work here is done. Yeah, fours are no good at this table right now. El Nasser needs to step carefully here. Pocket queens for Nasser El Nasser. Come on in. And he moves all in. Call. And cop with a quick call with those aces. El Nasser with his queens in trouble. Dennis Phillips glad he got out of dodge. El Nasser decided to get frisky with his queens. Billy Cop raised under the gun and then re-raised. That certainly could have tipped him off to aces or kings. Maybe El Nasser put Cop on some type of move, but now he must be thinking, why? There's the flop, El Nasser at risk. Deuce 4-10. Oh. Phillips went ahead of set. Damn. Why didn't he just call? Because if he just called, <laughs> that could happen. Cop happy to push out one of the other pocket pairs. Well, uh, I doubled you up. I'd get a double me up. As it stands, Cop's ace is still ahead of El Nasser. El Nasser still at risk. A 10 on the turn, one more card to come. I can't look. Nasser El Nasser needs a queen, or he is wamboozled El Wamboozled. <laughs> the river card is a tray of spades. Cop will win the hand and knock off Nasser El Nasser in 137th place. Damn! A missed opportunity for Dennis Phillips, but the aces got paid off, and with 4.6 million now, Billy Cop is the second biggest stack in the room. Back inside the Rio, there is the newest banner in the room celebrating the youngest ever main event champ, the defending champ, Peter Eastgate of Denmark. He is at tonight's feature table. Peter's only played in two main events. He won it last year, and he still could win it this year. 
Action is on Eddie Teams. He owns a pizza parlor here in Las Vegas. Joe Pesci's Pizza. He has pocket jacks. All in. He's going to move all in for his last 277000 All in from under the gun. Action on Joe Hashem in the small blind. Pocket eights. Hashem, his gut says no. He's playing it very snug, and that's going to keep him out of trouble here. Peter Eastgate now in the big blind. Ace, queen offsuit. I'm all in. And Eastgate will make the call to put teams at risk. Eastgate with not much more than teams. Teams will be at risk, as you said, but the defending champion is in for most of his chips. The loser of this hand will either be out or crippled. Hashem glad he got rid of his eights. Eastgate has played almost the entire main event with a below average chip stack. Trying to take out Edward Teams right here. The flop is 10, ace, five. Eastgate takes the lead with a pair of aces. World champs run good, and Teams now halfway back to shoving another pepperoni and onion pizza into the oven. Turn card now is an eight. Oh, oh Hashem folded pocket eights. Yeah, it eats. Hey. I'm so bad. And like Dennis Phillips before him, a case of what might have been for Joe Hashem. Teams now needs a jack to survive and cripple Peter Eastgate. The river card is a six. Peter Eastgate will take that pot, knocking off any teams. He'll win over $40,000. I always win these. Yeah. yeah. Peter Eastgate survives being on the edge again. Yeah. And Norman, look at teams. A perfect display of how players describe being knocked out of the main event, stunned and momentarily lost. Particularly when you get this deep, it's a shock to the system. Why would you put an eight out there for? Seriously, why? It's, it's crazy. Like, the, you guys are folding pairs in, like, hidden sets. No regrets for Eastgate on that hand. This year, Peter is proving that he is no fluke with another deep main event run that surprises even himself. It's been an amazing ride. Going into the main event, if anyone would have told me I would have gone as deep, I would have assumed that they were kidding. I'm still alive, and I still got hope. And that's the good thing about it. Some of the other guys know how I play and they know how much it could mean to me to, to go as deep as possible. So they might think I'm a little bit scared. If any of the guys are trying to beat Peter Iske just because he's a world champ, they're kind of playing the main event the wrong way because $8.5 million, which is far more important than beating me. Well then, probably the last many, many years, the best poker player who won the World Series of Poker Main Event sitting right there. I'm the defending champion. That's what keeps me motivated. I still want to win. Because if you don't have the hunger to win, then you should really not be playing poker anymore. I'm still hungry. He's been a wonderful and unshakable champion. Humble, self-deprecating, and respectful of his elders. Ah, his mom must be proud. Six all-ins? Four. Well, yeah, basically six. But two of the times I wasn't all-in, but I would have been very crippled if I lost it. Very. No, it's all about puck controlling. No, you're playing good, kid. Eastgate and Hashem still attempting to join a most elite group of multiple main event winners. Each of these men won back-to-back -back titles. Moss, Unger, Brunson, and Chan. Can it be done again? It's not out of the equation. Peter Eastgate still with that chance. To the outer tables, Elke Grosbelier with head in hand. He has a huge decision for all his chips. Scott Citron just raised all in with pocket kings. Elke with ace king. Elke was rolling early at this main event, but he has struggled since. All in. Elke pre-flop will go all in. Citron with a chance to knock off one of the hottest players in the world. Well, Ace King has not been a good hand for Elke today. The flop is trade deuce deuce. Chris Bellier needs a lot of help. Yeah, Elke, as you can see, doesn't want it to end here. Turn card is a six. One more card to come. The 25-year-old Milwaukee pro looking for it to hold. Elke desperately hoping his main event can continue. It will only continue if he hits an ace on the river. The river card is a jack, and that is it. Scott Citron knocking off Elke Grosbelier in 122nd place. Elke with a fine showing, but his hot streak over the last year couldn't carry him any further at this main event. He once had a grip on this tournament, now takes the long, lonely walk to the rail. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Room and day six of the main event. Let's check in with Phil Ivey at table two. And on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky pocket cam, Phil has a deuce. 
And an ace. I wonder if there's a stat on whether Phil raises more or less often when he's getting massaged. He's always getting massaged. <laughs> a raise to 54000 Now to Ryan Hart in the big blind with eight deuce. He's a finance manager at a car dealership. And he's going to make the call. Norman, why would he do that to himself? He knows his only shot is to outplay the best player in the world after the flop. And here is the flop. Six, ten, eight. Hart hit his pair of eights. And he checks. Well, if you're going to hit middle pair, playing eight deuce, you should do something with it. Ivy missed the flop and checks. No continuation bet from Phil Ivy this time. Turn card, queen of spades. Hart checks again. I'm not sure what Ryan Hart's game plan is at this point. I know Ivy's game plan is to win pots, and he is going to bet 80,000 right now. Well, that bet says I'm Phil Ivy, and you work in a car dealership. <laughs> give me the pot, give it to me now. Ivy reads the amateur as weak. <laughs> Ryan Hart. Looks into those intimidating eyes of Phil Ivey and lays it down. What was he doing in that hand? Uh, if you're going to mess with Phil Ivey, you better be fully committed. Pretty much an easy layup for Phil Ivey against Hart there. As this field boils down, it must be gratifying for the top pros to be making such an impact. At the outer tables, there is Prahlad Friedman still in it, but he'll lay that hand down. Prahlad's just chillaxing. What the dilly, yo? Bracelet winning pro Kenny Tran is also still in this main event, and he's in a hand right now with Joe Cotta, a pro from Michigan. Kenny getting low on chips. Kenny checks the flop. Cotta pushes Tran all in. They call him sick call Kenny, but he won't make that call. Joe Cotta, just 21 years old, and Kenny Tran is aging fast. Kenny under one million chips now. Back to Nicole Pepe facing a pre-flop re-raise to 190,000 from England's James Aikenhead. Aikenhead, a poker pro, former train conductor on a London commuter route. Pepe will make the call for 130,000 more. Heads up to the flop, Trey 10-4. Aikenhead puts together 260,000 chips. Pepe now I'm all in. moves all in. Her husband, Tad Jurgens looking nervous now. You may recall Aiken had runner-up last year in a bracelet event to Grant Hinkle. Pepe made a re-raise like this on a 10-high board earlier and got her opponent to fold, and it happens again, and she'll take that pot. I think she keeps getting her money in with the best of it. So Aunt Lisa and her husband love it. Support from family and friends means so much at this part of the tournament. Back to our featured table, only 118 players remain. The average chip stack over 1.6 million. And with Warren Zaki dropping back, the new chip leader is that man, Billy Kopp, with 4.7 million. Across this table, Peter Eastgate with 660,000, Hashim with only 450,000, and JC Tran in serious trouble with less than 14 big blinds in his stack. Table's gonna tip over on that side. Boom. I've been pushing my left elbow down this whole time. We're, we're holding the table down. Even if the rest of the table combined their chips, I think Billy Cops almost got him covered. These short stack pros looking for something they can double up with. Jack nine for Hashem. Hashem down to 25 big blinds, but patient. He folded, Eastgate with ace seven of hearts. He folds. Eastgate also patient with just over 30 big blinds left. To Dennis Phillips with about an average chip stack, pocket tens. Phillips in the process of buying Broadway Trucking, where he's worked several years. A raise to 55,000 with his pocket tens. JC Tran in the big blind, king queen off. JC part of a tight circle of poker friends. Nam Lee, Chino Reem, Amnon Filippi, Michael Mizraki. JC with the call, he'll go heads up against Dennis Phillips. Tran short stacked, looks at queen four deuce, and he takes the lead with that queen. JC says he used to have trouble in late stages of tournaments, but a couple of bracelets tell you he's improved in that area. He checks top pair. Phillips with his pocket tens. 80. Hopes that Tran missed that flop. That's 80,000. Well, with that bet, Phillips wants to find out if those tens are still good. I'm all in. All in. What does he know now? Tran moves all in. Tens are no good. 140 more. A decision here for Dennis Phillips. Your queen's good. Oh. He called JC's hand, but still makes the call. Yeah, it's a so-so call from Dennis. Chances are he was behind, and he's not getting the right price. Tran at risk. Turn card is a five. Looks good now for JC. Phillips will need a 10 
to send J.C. Tran to the rail. River card is another queen and trips for J.C. Tran will double him up. J.C. Tran will take the double up, but he's still got less than 30 big blinds. Yeah, about a million or so short of the chip average. Seriously, what's the J and C stand for? Just call. <laughs> Just call. Just call. Just call. <laughs> Just calling pre-flop work for Tran that time, but it's going to take a lot more to realize his vision of being a member of the November 9. Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back inside the Rio in the 2009 main event, and welcome to the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. Your chance at home to match wits with Norman while trying to guess the concealed hole cards. Nobody will play me heads up anymore, Lon, because they have seen my pristine reading skills on national TV. Did his Phillips folds on Daniel Nielsen, a 22-year-old from Australia with the wild card hand. Nielsen attended the University of Technology in Sydney. I believe they are the raging Cajuns. <laughs> a raise to 58,000. Joe Hashem with pocket eights again. Well, Nielsen's in middle position, so I'm going to put him on a suited ace 10. Hashem calls from the cutoff for 58,000. Hashem is also putting him on an ace 10, I believe. Imagine that. Now, normally, Joe might raise there, but he's trying to preserve some chips and see the flop cheaply. The blinds folded. Hashem and Nielsen heads up. Seven, Trey King. Hashem got no improvement. Nielsen first to act. He checks. No continuation bet from Nielsen. It's possible Hashem knows Nielsen from Australia. Not a lot of people there. 42. Hashem will bet. 42,000 with his eights. Joe's thinking my eights are good if the king didn't hit him, and I don't think it did. So he bets and hopes that ends matters. This will be Nielsen's second World Series cash. He thinks about it. And 42,000 uh -oh. is enough oh. to call. Just calls. I don't think he's calling with ace-10, so I'm wrong. Turn card, queen of clubs. Maybe Nielsen has ace-7 and hit middle pair, which is still good yeah. news for Hashem. Nielsen checks again. Now I've got Nielsen on ace-7. I go with the flow. Check. Hashem slows quickly, down. Quickly. Before he changes his mind. Calling for a quick river card. Another queen on the river. So Hashem left with queens and eights. Nielsen. Uh-oh. Again? Yeah, he's now betting 170000 Really? He's bet two-thirds the pot? I was wrong about ace-10. He's not betting ace-seven. I think he has Joe beat, but I don't know what he has. That queen could not have hit him. Maybe he's got a weak king and now decides it's good. Shaking like a leaf in the winter. And maybe he's trying to bluff Joe off a marginal hand because Joe's low on chips and might not want to commit more here. It's hard to read University of Technology dropouts. I'd fold, Joe. Can you show me if I fold? Don't show him. Don't. Show me if I fold? One Aussie to another? Yeah. You promise? Make him watch ESPN. <laughs> Hashem, short stacked. Lays it down. Nielsen. Had the king, and he will win the Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. And he shows Hashem. Kept his promise. Nice kid. I had no clue. Nice hand, buddy. Thanks for showing. Nice hand, just like good luck, commonly heard in the poker room, but our players sincere when they utter those words. That's what we're talking about in this edition of The Nuts. Nice hand. Nice hand, sir. Nice hand is code for you're an idiot. Yeah. Nice hand. Deep down, you're saying go yourself. Nice hand. Nice hand. It's all about intent, intonation. Shoot. Nice hand, sir. I hate your guts. Nice hand. I kind of mean it, sort of, sometimes. Nice hand. All right. It could be said sarcastically, like, nice hand, Barry. Or it could be said with genuine admiration for how the person played the hand. Nice hand. Most amateurs, they say nice hand. I'm pretty sure they mean it. Nice hand, Eric. Thank you. Bill Ivey says nice hand. He's being sarcastic. Nice play. Trust me. Good luck, kid. Oh, good luck. Gentlemen, good luck. There is no such thing as good luck. Good luck, baby. I say good luck to you, but you know, baby, inside me, I say good luck to Scotty Moore. <laughs> I want them to have the worst luck they've ever experienced. Oh, my God. Oh. 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 Everybody knows that's what we want. Let's just be truthful about it. Don't do it to me like that. Oh. <laughs> good luck. What do you mean, good luck? Bad luck to you. Good luck to you. God. Hope you lose. <laughs> Better luck next time, dude. Thanks for playing. 
Enough with nice hand and good luck. Just say Mazel Tov. It fits all occasions. Tom Schneider is hoping his luck continues. He's mixing it up with John Martin and Ludovic Lequet after the flop. The flop was nine, king, five. Martin on the button called a pre-flop raise from Lequet, and then Schneider re-raised from the big blind. Almost a million in the pot. Schneider's going to lead out for 650,000. Lequet folds and runs. Martin re-raises enough to put Tom Schneider all in. Flop is set, huh? I call. And Schneider calls. Let's see the hands. Schneider with pocket aces. Martin second best with kings. Big hands bump into each other. Schneider all in, and we have a three and a half million chip pot. Wow, tough hand for Martin to get away from. Ran into the pocket aces. Full double. Double travel now. Julie Schneider keeping a close watch on things. Turn card now. Is a 10. No help to Martin. Tom Schneider. The one-time chip leader is at risk, but only a river king would knock yeah. him out. It's yeah. another 10. Martin comes up short. Schneider will double up. That's great, Tom. Schneider with almost three and a half million chips now. The aces got paid off big time. Why did that king have to go? John Martin bemoans his fate. Martin's bad luck is a boon to Tom Schneider, and that big pot puts this dangerous player back in the thick of it. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, right now, the magician Antonio Esfandiari trying to knock out the steel worker Dwayne Stacy. Esfandiari with pocket nines. Good luck. Thank you. Mazel tov. Dwayne Stacy with King Jack offsuit. And now the flop, a set for Esfandiari, a straight draw Thank for Stacy. Turn card is a six, and Stacy's still way behind. Stacy's gonna need a 10 for a straight, or his main event is over. Miracle. Miracle. River card is an ace, as Fondiari will win the hand. Dwayne Stacy, who finished 97th last year in the main event, goes out 113th here in 09. The former magician creating a habit out of making his opponent's chips disappear. It's the massage. Mazel tov. Antonio with a better than average chip stack and massage. Elsewhere, Bradley Craig is standing up. His ace queen is all in against the pocket kings of pro Noah Boken. Craig shouldn't even be in this position. Boken had raised and re-raised pre-flop. Craig called all in for 1.2 million. Yes! Oh, and Craig flops aces up to take control of this hand. Craig wants down to 400 chips early in the main event. Mr. Chip in a chair is living large. Turn card is no help to Boken. Craig has to dodge a king to keep the chip in a chair yes. dream alive. It's another deuce, and Bradley Craig doubles up again. Craig says it's destiny. It's hard to argue with him. Come here, Pat. What can I have? Mazel tov. Boken, a solid pro from Amsterdam, not happy that Craig challenged his kings with ace-queen. And now, Bradley Craig with two and a half million chips and a chair. Elsewhere with Jack Nine of Diamonds, James Aikenhead will try to knock out Randy Propson, who leads preflop with ace eight. Our Yahtzee guy got very short stacked. What's your confidence level? Pretty high. Propson all in for his last 300,000. The flop, and there's an ace for Propson. It's not Yahtzee, but it's close enough. Propson headed for a much needed double up. Robson has to feel confident. Here's the turn card. Is a queen. Aikenhead with a straight draw. Just brings a gut shot, right? Uh, ten would give Aikenhead a straight. Come on the river. Did I, hear, did I hear you say the word ten? No, I said only. What's wrong with you? Walk away. Robson just away. needs to you dodge a ten. River card. Oh, oh, is the ten? Aikenhead with a straight to the ace to eliminate Robson. Yeah. Brutal runner. Runner ends his day. I should have concentrated. Mazel tov. Propson earns over $40,000. Aikenhead earns the rest of Randy's chips. Let's get back to the stacked featured table. That includes two world champs and several other players to be feared. What's going on, Joe? Man, we don't get the big bear. We have the little itty bitty ones. JC Tran has once again fallen on hard times. He's got about 150,000 chips now. All right, action on Dennis Phillips. In the cutoff. Phillips looks down at King Chen, offsuit. The hat he wore last year, he retired. This is a new Cardinals cap for Phillips. He will raise it to 65000 Dennis is donating this hat to charity. It would be more valuable with your signature on it, by the way. 
J.C. Tran with a six of clubs in the small blind. J.C. says the life of a poker pro not that glamorous. Too much travel, too much bad food. He calls for 53,000 more. We'll go heads up with Phillips. The flop is deuce, nine, 10. Phillips with a pair of tens. J.C.'s call is a little odd. He's only got less than 100,000 chips left. And they're all in the middle now. He moves all in. You don't have to call and ruin your image. No. I have to call. He got me killed. No. So Phillips and his pair of tens will try to knock out a very powerful J.C. Tran. Yeah, air on the flop for J.C., but he pushes. Ace one time. And if J.C. had pushed pre-flop, Dennis would have called then, so it works out the same. Tran at risk. Time for a bad beat. Turn card now is a queen. Tran down to his last card. Well, we just saw a four-outer for a bad beat. J.C. needs a three-outer. He has to have an ace. The river card is a tray. J.C. Tran comes up short. Oh, thanks, sir. Knocked out by Dennis Phillips. Well played. And you can tell by the player's response to that elimination how much respect there is for J.C. Tran. Peter, good luck. His fourth main event cash since 2004, and this is J.C.'s highest finish. Well done. You make me some money? J.C. goes out in 108th place. And one more feared player hits the rail, but nobody should let their guard down as plenty of powerful pros remain. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend Game for your phone or iPhone. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. Welcome back to the Rio. Three players currently over 4 million chips, led by Billy Kopp with 4.6 million. Other notable players in the field, Phil Ivey with 1.8 million, the chip average, while Joe Hashem is riding the red zone with only 170,000. Action on Dennis Phillips with almost 1.5 million. He looks down at pocket aces. Dennis third last year in the main event, closing in on cracking the top 100 this year. It's remarkable, and it's not all pocket aces. The aces raised to 65,000. Hashem with jack four. Into the muck. Hashem exasperated as his stack dwindles. Peter Eastgate with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Speaking of remarkable, last year's champion also trying to crack the top 100. He calls for 65,000 on Frank Rusnak in the big blind. Ace nine of spades. Rusnak used to be a sports writer at the Chicago Sun-Times, one of my favorite newspapers. Sports writer with a big stack. <laughs> Go figure. Good for you. The flop now, three-handed. Phillips with the aces. Four, Trey King. Phillips is still best with the aces. That flop missed everybody. It might have hit the valet in the parking lot. Rusnak checks his no pair. Phillips checks the best hand. Phillips gets coy. Eastgate now. With Queen Jack. Well, he's going to try to use his position to end matters. That's 105,000. Rusnak folds. Phillips isn't going anywhere. Even if the king hit Peter, Phillips would still be in great shape. Phillips with a smooth call. And Phillips looks like he's trying to trap Peter Eastgate. So heads up between the two remaining November Niners. It is a nine on the turn. Eastgate with a gut shot. Phillips added a flush draw. Phillips checks again. Eastgate knocked Phillips out of last year's main event. He is aggressive. He is in position. And it looks like he's going to take another stab at it. He makes it 175,000. I'm sure Phillips would like to return the knockout favor. Come on in. And he does move in, enough to put Eastgate at risk. Well, that'll be it for Peter Eastgate. He's not going to risk the rest of his chips here. Dennis Phillips played it beautifully. Eastgate did make the laydown, but he hates to give up any chips at this point of the tournament, especially being as short stacked as he is. Let's get over to table two, where Phil Ivey has continued to rebuild his chip stack, and he's doing it, of course, under the watchful eyes of his fan club, Mel and Pat Humphreys. They're nice folks. That's a big button. Oh, there's your fans right there. Longtime fans. Absolutely. I've known them since I was like 18 years old. <laughs> Action at table two on Bob Whalen, a 51-year-old former house painter, now plays poker full-time, ace king. He looks a little grumpy. Lighten up, Bob. You're in the main event and doing great. A raise to 75,000. Norman, look who's here. The dermatologist? Alex Jalali, the German dermatologist with ace queen off. He's got such nice skin. And he will make the call for 75,000 to Phil Ivey with pocket kings. My man with pocket kings in the small blind ball game. I'm all in. All, all in. in. Whalen, ace-king, that will go all in. 
I think the dermatologist will be checking his uh, appointment book. I wonder if he got your memo, Norman, about Ace Queen. And he does fold it. I'm all in against Phil Ivey. I'm all in against Phil Ivey. The six deadliest words in poker. <laughs> Ivey shows his two kings. Nice hand. Mazel tov. So Waylon will need good luck to come from behind and beat Ivey and remain in the main event. The flop is five, jack four. That's a good flop for Phil. And Whalen's still looking for an ace or runner, runner straight. Turn card is a seven. He's still looking to spike a winner. Ivy about to pad his stack. Bob Whalen has to have a king. The river card is another jack, and Ivy wins another hand, knocks off another player. Bob Whalen goes out in 105th place. I like Ivy, Ivy, Ivy more than Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. It's more subdued. They'll all get there eventually. So with that win, Ivy shrinks his main event field as Whalen seeks an exit. Ivy wins a pot of almost 1.4 million, and he's back on a roll. Now to the featured table where we've talked a lot about the strong lineup there, but it's the big names who are getting bounced around. J.C. Tran went out, Eastgate is leaking chips, and the 05 champ Joe Hashem in dire straits with Jack Nine of Clubs. I guess I'm all in. Hashem doesn't even have five big blinds left. Players all in. So he'll push. Billy Cop with pocket fours. Well, we're gonna have a caller from the small blind, and it's the chip leader. Cop with over four million chips. Look at all those chips. And he does put together a call to put Hashem at risk. Small pair. Hashem the favorite, but he's behind right now. He can afford it, stop calling for a fall. Hashem's a main event monster. In 2005, he beat a field of 5,600. In 06, he was 238th in a field of 8,700. And now, even if he were knocked out here, he'd finish 103rd in a field of 6,400. That's three finishes in the top 3% of massive fields. Hashem very popular with the poker fans here at the Rio. But Billy Cop trying to knock him out right now. There's the flop, king 7-7, seven, seven. Hashem picks up a flush draw and more outs. Yeah, if another king comes putting two pair on the board, Hashem's jack kicker would win. There's no way I win this. Pretty sure you can't lose from here. Huge number of outs. Late to swim, right? Cop's pocket four is still good, but Hashem now a three to two favorite to win the hand, and this crowd clearly wants to see the champ stick around. Billy Cop in the role of bad guy here against the sentimental favorite. All right. Hashem looking to catch something. There's an ace. Oh, he picked up some outs, but he needs to hit. Ace, king, jack. Ace, king, nine, jack, club. Wow. A lot of help still in the deck for Joe Hashem. With the 05 world champ looking for an ace, king, jack, nine, or club, or it's over. The river card. Oh, and Hashem comes up empty. Billy Kopp wins the hand and knocks off 05 world champion Joe Hashem in 103rd Good luck, place. Good luck, Good luck, buddy. Mazel tov. Good luck, man. Mazel tov. Good luck, man. Mazel tov. The 43-year-old Hashem has made quite an impression on the World Series since first coming here in 05. Billy Kopp knocks out one world champion, leaving only Peter Eastgate, the defending champion. Kopp now up to almost five million chips. Few have done it better than Joe Hashem in main event history. Once again, he plays like a champion. He is one of the game's premier performers. Oh, they colored you up, huh? And you see the new lavender chip that's in play. Got some of the pretty ones. Yeah. It's the only one on the table, right? Yeah. You better not be coming for them. Yeah. <laughs> On the FullTiltPoker.net tournament ticker, you see the four chips in play. The new Lavender chip is worth 100,000, and there are nearly 200 million chips in play. Action at this feature table begins on Ty Tran on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, Ace Four of Hearts. One day I will have a Lavender chip on, one day. One day. 22-year-old from Houston raises the action to 77,000. The chip leader, Billy Cop with Queen Jack. If you play Queen Jack, they take away your Lavender chips. He does fold. Dennis Phillips now. Ace, five of spades. The ace of spades, Lon, did you arrange for the prettiest card in the deck to be in the first <laughs> hand to make me happy? Just for you. He calls for 77,000. Joe Seabock now at this table. 10-6. Not this time. The defending champ, Peter Eastgate, still around. And the big blind, Trey Deuce. Somewhat unplayable, for me anyway. And he will not play those. 
Eastgate gets out of the way, leaving Tran and Phillips heads up. There's a good chance this will end up as a split pot. The flop is ace, deuce, tray, a pair of aces, and a wheel draw for both. Phillips kicker now looking good. Wow, did you arrange to have such an interesting flop on our first hand to make me happy? Eastgate would have flopped two pair if he'd stuck around. Tran checks. I wonder if either player puts the other on an ace. Phillips will try to get some answers and bets 150,000. Tran answers with a call. So what do they know now? As usual, I have no answers. <laughs> so the turn card now is another ace. Well, neither one can think the other has an ace now. Oh. Tran is going to slow play his trips. Yeah, he might be plotting a check raise he may regret. Dennis Phillips now. He's going to slow play his. I, I'm confused as usual. <laughs> it's a king of diamonds on the river. Phillips with a check mark with the five kicker. Tran is beat, but I assume this is the time for him to attack. Well, Tran just checks. I am so confused by Tran. Then again, I am confused by daylight savings time. <laughs> Phillips is going to take a stab at it. 200,000. Yeah, Dennis has to believe his three aces are good. 200,000. And makes the call. He has to think his three aces are best, but now he sees their second best. But he just called on the river. Oh. 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 Boy, Ty Tran saved a lot of chips there. He thought he might be beat, and he was right. Never wow. far from Dennis Phillips is his fan base, the Philippians, and you got a taste of that truck horn they lug around. I don't want to hear that horn oh. again unless I'm on I-70. I think he thought I was sicker than you did. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking so too, but it's like, wow. Dennis Phillips collecting chips. It's beginning to feel a lot like 2008 here at the Rio. Norman, over the last 25 years, only five players have made back-to-back -back final tables in the main event. Dan Harrington, the only one to do it in the past decade. Yet two players not only have a chance to join this exclusive club, they could rewrite the record books. Lon, Action Dan outlasted 3,400 players to go back-to-back -back in 03 and 04. Now we have Peter Eastgate and Dennis Phillips, each outlasting 13,000 over the last two years. If either makes it to the final table again, it would be beyond Harrington-esque. In fact, I've already trademarked Philippian Feet and Eastgate Encore. That Philippian Feet in full swing, Dennis with 2.7 million chips, but Eastgate's Encore could use some help. He's riding the short stack. Let's take a look at how they compare to the rest of the field. Billy Cop still the chip leader with over 5 million among the notables. Phil Ivey with 2.7 million. Leo Margetz and Nicole Pepe still hanging tough. Out in the field, pro Kenny Tran has all his chips at risk with his pocket sixes against the ace nine suited of Grayson Ramage. And let's look at the flop. Ramage hit a pair of aces, but Tran a set of sixes. Tran has this one pretty much locked up. Turn the ace on the turn, make it some more side. <laughs> turn card now is a jack and Ramage drawing dead. I like assignment in life. I don't know if Ramage found it all that exciting to double up Kenny Tran. Kenny Tran's going to need a couple of more double ups to be a real threat once again in this field. Kenny only has 16 big blinds right now. At another table, Prahlad Friedman facing a half million chip bet from Jonathan Tamayo on the river. Tamayo has the check mark with a set of sevens. Tamayo graduated from Cornell. I guess he's smart. Friedman turned a pair of queens. Prahlad needs about half his remaining chips to call this. Call. And he will call. And he will say goodbye to those chips as Tamayo turns over the winner. That hand hurt Prahlad a lot, and I will spare him my lecture about ace-queen. And he will ship those chips across the felt to the 23-year-old Texan. And with that pot, he will be above the chip average in the room while Prahlad Friedman continues to struggle. All right, let's get over to table two where seven-time bracelet winner Phil Ivey is at work with pocket jacks. Ivey just re-raised hack dang. Mel and Pat Humphreys usually see Phil get his chips in good, but he's trailing the two queens of Dang. Dang, a 24-year-old pro at University of Virginia grad. All right, I'm all in. And he all comes in. back over the top, all in. 300 more. Was it? Actually, it's 416 more. I'll call. But he calls call. with the jacks. And Dang in good shape to double up through Ivy. I don't like this, Lon. You had me in such a good mood earlier with the Ace of Spades, but now you got me watching Phil Ivy dominated. Playing pocket jacks. All right, so Dang's Queens. And now a set of jacks for Ivy to take the lead. Oh, you got to feel for Dang from a four and a half to one favorite to one step out the door. Wow. So Dang now looking for another queen, but it's a five on the turn. And now Dang needs that queen. 
or he will be out of here. The river card is a seven, and Ivy completes Look, the bad nice, beat. Nice, 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 nice. Hack Dang Hello, out guys. of here at 98th place. Well, when the best player gets lucky, it's lights out. Ivy very gracious in victory. That bandwagon becoming a locomotive as his run for the final table gathers steam. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. The World Series of Poker. 40th Annual Memory. Barbara Ann Wright was you know, one of the pioneers. I'm the only woman to make the final table in the main event so far. Well, the pressure really comes down on Barbara Enright. She was ahead of her time. That was before a lot of women played poker. Well, I think that was a great accomplishment, but I was just focused on winning the World Series. I wasn't thinking, oh, no woman has ever done this before. She came before me and Jennifer and Kathy and all of us. It's so funny because we're sort of considered pioneers in that sense, and really, we don't deserve it. I mean, Barbara was doing that long before we came along. Enright finished fifth at the 1995 final table won by Dan Harrington. Annie Duke is the all-time top female money winner at the World Series, but either of the two women remaining in the main event can put themselves at the top of that list by making the final table. Leo Margetz is making a strong run, but has a tough decision. Rafit Palovich just put out a 415,000 chip bet on the river with ace high. Good. Oh, Have the flash. No, he's got squadoosh. Pavlich's bluff might have worked if the river card was a blank for Margetz, but it gave her a set. A set of nines will take that pot for Margetz. She loves running marathons, and Margetz is doing quite well in the marathon as the main event. Meanwhile, Nicole Pepe is having a tough time today. Her husband, Tad Jurgens, a poker pro on the rail for support. Nicole on a hand with Tommy Vitas each check the turn. River card is a 10 of clubs. Vitas first to act, bet 75,000. Not gonna do it. Nicole lays it down. Vita shows pocket queens. He gave me free, free looks though, but I didn't get there. Pepe with about 800,000, less than half the current chip average. Someone else looking for a little help at the moment, Antonio Esfandiari, his king-queen dominated by Bobby Law's ace-king, Law trying to double up. Law once owned a bowling alley, he's got my vote. Now it's time to do what I do best. Suck out and destroy the dreams of grinded out poker professionals? <laughs> All right, here's the flop. And he did it! As Fondiari flops us me? straight! Are you absolutely kidding me? The magician did what he does best. He waved the wand, flopped the straight, and now Bobby Law in deep trouble. So the turn card now. Another jack doesn't help Law. Queen, one time. Is there a queen in there? Law needs a queen to make a higher straight, otherwise he's done. Rivers a seven, S. Fondiari knocks out Bobby Law. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. It's believable because we just saw it. Antonio looks guilty, but he'll take the win and now can revel in his newly won chips, a magician indeed. Meanwhile, Phil Ivey at table two is faced with a raise from Blair Rodman, a solid poker pro. With the Humphreys watching his every move, Phil deciding whether or not to call Rodman, who shoved with pocket eights. Rodman had 12 big blinds left. Ivy needs just a little more than 10% of his stack to call this. With ace nine off, he does. You're not the guy I want to race with. No, not the way uh, Ivy's hitting flops. Oh. All right, let me win a race for a change. Rodman won a World Series bracelet in 2007. Here's the flop. King 10-4. Rodman's eights are still best. Ivy with 36 career World Series caches. Rodman has 34. Turn card now. Six of hearts, no help to Phil Ivey. And Phil Ivey will need an ace or a nine to knock out Blair Rodman. The river card is a deuce, and Rodman will win the hand to double up. I hope he enjoys Phil Ivey's chips. Can't win them all, Phil. I don't like seeing you short over there anyway. You knew it was coming. So Blair Rodman will stick with us a little while longer. Back to the feature table now for the Jack Link Speed Jerky Wild Card Hand. Norman, I hope you've been studying. Lon, when I walk into a poker room now, people shout, Norman, what do I have? And I always know. <laughs> On Dennis Phillips with Pocket Kings. Dennis is under the gun plus one. That's one to the left of the first person to act, but you know that, Lon. 
70,000 is the raise from Phillips with those two kings. And when a player raises from early position, it often is with a big pocket pair, just like Dennis has. And it creates a lot of folds behind, which has happened. Folded to Ty Tran. He has the wild card hand. Tran finished 14th in a World Series event earlier this year in a field of 2,800. And from the big blind, he'll call these two a butt heads again. Tran knows Dennis might have a big pair. I'm going to put Tran on the exact same hand he had earlier against Dennis, ace four suited. The flop is 10 ace Trey. That ace should concern Dennis a little bit. When you play pocket kings, you know an ace is going to hit the flop 23% of the time. I think the ace hit Tran. Tran checks whatever he's got. Phillips now with a bet of 150,000. Remember on that earlier hand, Tran had aces on the flop and check called with them. Tran check raises here to 440,000. I think Dennis just found out his kings are no good. And you know, I've seen that commercial where Jen Harmon mucks her pocket kings when an ace hits the flop. If Dennis watches TV, he'll fold here. I guess he doesn't have a TV. He makes the call. Well, he should buy one, but I guess Dennis doesn't believe Tran has an ace. All right, the turn card now is a six of diamonds. You know, Tran might be a little worried that Phillips called his check raise on the flop. Action on, Ty Tran, and he checks again. If Tran's got a weak ace, he might check there because he fears Dennis might have a stronger ace again. Now Dennis Phillips checks back. Well, I'm perplexed. If Dennis doesn't think Tran has an ace, why wouldn't he bet there? I think he's got an ace. So the river card now. Eight of clubs. Well, no flush out there, and with that board, nobody's going to have a straight. You'd have to have a 9-7 in the hole. Tran checks again. Tran still might be checking a weak ace. Phillips could bet here if he thinks his kings are good, but I'd take the freebie now. Dennis checks. All right, what does he got? Tran shows a weak ace. You were right again. Lon, I'm getting better. One day I might have a winning poker session. And Tran will take that pot. I figure you have something like that. On the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Put him on kings and take race. <laughs> we even now. Good hand. Tran takes down the pot to throw a minor detour in Phillips' road to another final table. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio. There is the 2009 main event bracelet that will be awarded to this year's champion on November 10th. Our defending champion is having a tough go of it here on day six, but he's in a lot better shape than the short stack at the table, Joe Seabach. Ah, but he looks good. You were thinking of going all in, you know? Think about it. Yeah. But you know, it's the main event. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to go out like that. Although, I might be pot committed, you guys. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. So think about that very carefully. What do you got, like 230? I don't have much. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about what I got. Don't worry about what I got, all right? Seabox's <laughs> hands easily cover his chips. And Billy Cop has everyone covered. He's the chip leader. He's got 8-4. I think Billy needs a helper to handle his chips. He folds. Dennis Phillips with King Deuce. Rags. Into the muck. Fold that over to short stack Joe Seabock. 6-5. Joe can't find two cards to play on the button, but he really looks good. On to Peter Eastgate in the small blind. The champ has pocket aces. In the small blind with nobody in the hand yet. Eastgate trying to plot how he can take the big blind's money. Eastgate looks like he's going to start with a raise. Makes it 65000 A min raise plus 5000 Clayton Newman, 22-year-old with 5-4. Just can't even peel a wheel draw here. The min raise was too much for oh, Newman. <laughs> Newman will lay it down. Why didn't you show? What? Why didn't you show? Yeah, see, that's why. Aces? Eastgate running rough, can't get any action with pocket aces. A lot of guys at this table looking for help. For the love of God, please. <laughs> you say you folded an ace? If I had an ace in a Snickers wrapper that was going in, you'd believe me. <laughs> yeah, but he might have been dominated by an ace in a Baby Ruth wrapper. <laughs> All right, meanwhile, let's get back over to table two. Phil Ivey with ace Trey in the big blind, called a raise by Ryan Fair, holding two deuces, as did the small blind Andrew Lichtenberger with ace Jack, and now we're three-way to the flop. The flop is queen Jack eight. Lichtenberger hits a pair of jacks. I hate seeing 2% next to Phil Ivey's name. Lichtenberger with his two jacks has the lead. The 21-year-old from New York, one of the best online players around. He checks. Middle pair, top kicker. 
And Lichtenberger says no. It's possible Lichtenberger just wary with Ivy behind him. It happens. Ivy checked. He missed the flop. Fair checks as well. Turn card is a 10. Lichtenberger still best with his jacks. There is a straight draw out there. So well, maybe we'll end up with a queen high straight on the board and everybody will be happy. Lichtenberger still leads with a pair of jacks. And he checks again. Again, he doesn't want to take a stab at this pot. Ivy checks behind. You know, sometimes the Ivy factor is in play. Nobody wants to bet into him. And fair checks as well. So a free river card for all. The river is a tray of hearts that pairs Ivy, but Lichtenberger earns the check mark. Lichtenberger and Fair, both are poker pros. They should act like it and take a stab at this pot. With his jacks, he checks again. Well, it looks like <laughs> Phil Ivy is saying there's a quarter million chips out there. If no one wants them, I'll take them. 150,000 says, I want it. Fair folds right away. Now, Ivy trying to bluff his way through two marginal hands. He's got one out of the way. Lichtenberger gives up the best hand, and Ivy will take the pot. The Ivy factor. I think I have my next book. <laughs> Lichtenberger had them both beat the whole way. Fair had Ivy beat until the river. Phil Ivy won the pot only because he's Phil Ivy. So with 89 players, the chip average right now just over 2 million. Tommy Venus has had a good day. He's in eighth place. Darvin Moon with almost 5.5 million in third, while Billy Kopp is still the one to beat. But there could be a change in that leaderboard. A huge hand in the outer tables. 3.8 million chips at stake. Pocket aces for Darvin Moon trying to knock out the pocket kings of Jamie Brown. So they got it all in pre-flop. Brown a poker pro, Moon a logger. Turn card now. Is a jack, no help to Brown, Moon's still ahead. And now Jamie Brown down to a two outer. Brown will need a king on the river or his day is done. And the river card is an eight. Darvin Moon's well-timed aces and Jamie Brown out the door in 89th place. And Lon, our chip leader now, is a logger and his name is Darvin Moon. It's the main event with over seven and a half million chips. To Ludovic Lequet, who's been among the chip leaders for much of the tournament, his pocket king's in trouble against Hamid Nerv's chance pocket aces. Lequet needs a king on the river. Oh! And he got it! And Lequet will double up to Nerv's Chan, who lost half his stack. There's the main event in a nutshell. Jamie Brown's pocket kings ran into aces, and he's gone. Ludovic Lequet's pocket kings also ran into aces, but he survives with a two-outer and now has five and a half million chips. And is once again among the chip leaders in the main event. Nearby, Antonio Esfandiari is at it again with kings up in the check mark already. The magician has Wesley Ismay drawing dead after the turn. Action on Antonio. He'll keep the pressure on and bet 720,000. Antonio raised pre-flop and Ismay re-raised him. And on the flop, Antonio bet with nothing and Ismay called with nothing. And now Ismay goes all in with nothing. With 60 big blinds left, plenty to play with, Ismay bluffs all in. It's either brilliant or harebrained, and it puts Esfandiari to the test. This would be for almost all of Antonio's chips. Antonio takes a close look at his nemesis. 900. Cool. He calls for over one million more. And Ismay is dismayed because he is dismissed. That was high risk, high reward, and Ismay high risked himself right out of here. In 88th place, he is gone, much to the delight of Antonio Esfandiari. Oh. Maybe he's hypnotizing oh. his opponents. Back at the Rio, only 87 players remain. Darvin Moon still the chip leader. Over at the featured table, Dennis Phillips is talking to some of his many supporters that have flocked to the Rio once again this year. Sorry, man. Dennis getting back to the table. Right. Just in Thanks, time guys. to play his hand. In tournament play, if your cards are dealt to you and you're not seated at the table, your hand is dead. Dennis gets back just in the nick of time. Action folded to Ty Tran with pocket sevens. Tran attended Houston Community College. I believe they are the Raging Cajuns. <laughs> and he raises to 77,000. Is that a tell? Dennis Phillips, boy, is he glad he got back to the table. Pocket aces. See, Dennis, if you kept talking to your friends, those aces would be in the muck right now. That's one of the reasons I don't have any friends. 
Dennis will re-raise to 180,000. Folded to Steve Sanders, 62 years old from Tulsa, Oklahoma with Pocket Queens. Sanders owns several RV parks, and this is a bad time for Pocket Queens on the button. The call. He calls for 180,000. He makes the call from the button. Small blind Joe Seabock folds, as does Peter Eastgate. Ty Tran with a re-raise to 605,000. You know, in the old days, Lon, if somebody four bet it, they would have pocket aces. But these days, people will try to bluff you with a four bet. And Phillips is the one with the aces. It's a dream come true for Dennis Phillips here. I'm all in. Yep. He moves all in. Tran cannot like the sound of that. That's over two million from Dennis Phillips. If Sanders is a reasonable man, and he looks like a reasonable man, he will muck those queens. And he does just that. So now back to Tran. He and Dennis have jousted a number of times here. Tran barely has Phillips covered. He can only call here if he thinks Phillips is making a once-in-a-lifetime audacious move on him. But the sevens go into the muck, and Phillips takes the pot with aces. Well, thank goodness we're spared the horn this time. Oh, you spoke too soon. The horn is back. <laughs> the horn is back. The fans are back. Dennis Phillips is back and making a memorable run reminiscent of a year ago. Making a final table last year, bringing out 300 and some friends of mine and celebrating with them was absolutely awesome. These are friends. These are relatives. People I've known, some of them for a year, some of them for 30 years. And they were all out there. A massive sea of white shirts and red hats, and it just kind of sent a shiver down my back. He and his supporters just lit up this poker theater. They'd erupt anytime I'd win a hand, anything like that. They just take down the Andes and they went nuts. <laughs> and this year, I've already made it farther than anybody thought. It is hard to describe. It is an improbable run. You're not supposed to be able to do this. I don't know whether it's the luck of the cards at a monster or a combination of a lot of different things. I'm just enjoying it. It's just been awesome. If I would make the final table the November 9 again this year, I think we'd have to have a different arena because I'm telling you, I would want everybody there, all the people I've met in the last year, holy cow. And you would have a party the likes of which Vegas hasn't seen for a while. Dennis makes it to the final table again this year. You might see me in a Cardinals jersey and hat, and I hate Tony LaRusso. <laughs> All right, to the outer tables now. Nicole Pepe's run in the main event might be in jeopardy. She's moved all in pre-flop for her remaining 890,000 chips. Her Aunt Lisa and husband Tad watching anxiously on the rail. Adam York next to act. He will not take on Nicole and Folds. So now action to Grayson Ramage. Does he want to call Nicole's all in? And he says, no thanks. And Nicole Pepe will hang in there. Tad has cashed 13 times at the World Series. This is definitely, though, a two-income family. So Nicole remains in the hunt. Meanwhile, Tom Schneider is collecting chips and his wife, Julie, rooting for him on the rail. my wife. Wow. Yeah, well, some of my ex-wives used to cheer me on when I played in a tournament, but they were just in it for the alimony. <laughs> a more serious moment nearby is all of Kenny Tran's chips are in the middle pre-flop. Right now, his ace five, about a two-to-one dog to Joe Cotta's pocket eights. Cotta just 21, trying to knock out one of the most feared players left. The flop is for Trey Trey. Cotta still leads, but Tran picks up a gut shot straight draw. Kenny doesn't get too excited over the draw. Turn card. Is a nine no help to Kenny. Kenny started his hand with less than 10 big blinds left. He's going to need an ace or a deuce to stick around. The river is a six, and that is it for the highly regarded pro Kenny Tran. He will win almost $58,000. Kenny Tran was 16th at the main event two years ago. Another stellar showing. And as this feared bracelet winner heads for the exit, the main event just got a little safer for the remaining 85 players.
back at the Rio as we take a look at the chip leaders. A few familiar faces. Darvin Moon, still the big stack. Billy Cop right behind him. But now fourth in chips is Phil Ivey. And right behind him, the magician Antonio Esfandiari. And there is the big stack of Darvin Moon. I don't think a logger from Western Maryland has ever been the chip leader at the main event. Meanwhile, the day five chip leader, Matt Affleck, has just been knocked out in 80th place by Nick Maimoni. Affleck could not overcome the striped shirt. He goes from being the big stack to being escorted to the cashier's window. Tom Schneider was among the chip leaders at the beginning of day six. Now all in against Grayson Ramage, Schneider's ace king against the ace queen. Ace king is your friend. I have no friends, so maybe I'll give ace king a call. The flop is 487. Schneider's ace king still good. By the way, remember if ace king is your friend, ace queen is your enemy. It's another four on the turn. Nothing. There. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, baby. If an eight or a seven comes, they will split the pot. Ramage can only knock out Schneider with a river queen. The river is an ace, and Tom Schneider will stick around after doubling up. That's what you do, baby. Stack him, stack him, stack him to the top. That's right. That's right, baby. Not even drinking. I wouldn't be so sure. The Schneiders certainly have different demeanors in the poker room, but what's the old saying? Sometimes opposites attract. My wife is a really good player. He finally admitted to it. Well, about time. Uh, my wife and I are the most competitive uh, married couple, I think, ever. In 2002, we started dating. Now, we would have been dating two years before that, but we were playing poker in the same game, and I had thought he was pretty cute for a while but he beat me really bad one hand, and he laughed at me, and I just got up from the table and I was like, okay, well, he's not cute after all. It's great to have a wife that plays poker. She's great to have around, she's very supportive, but she can be uh, a little bit interesting to have around. No, no, stack him, no. stack him, stack him, to the top! I get him aggravated and crazy, and, and then he seems to play okay. We are rolling now, back in this game! She's Constantly uh, high energy. Keep it going, keep it going, all the way till tomorrow. And I'm really trying to maintain calm and peace right now. When he's on his game, he's just so tough. If, if he just goes with his instincts, he'll win it. Julie was a poker dealer for 17 years. Tom says she is his biggest fan and biggest critic, and best I can tell, she's got the biggest mouth in the family. 78 players remain in this day six field. Among them, the November 9 duo of Dennis Phillips and Peter Eastgate at the feature table. Phillips with a, a little more than the chip average right now. Eastgate with less than one-fifth of the chip average. Action will be on Billy Cop, his chip stack, second best to Darvin Moon. He has pocket eights. Cop is a six-year senior at the University of Kentucky. Heck, I finished Maryland in five and a half years. How hard can Kentucky be? Cop raised to 105,000. Phillips with King Queen suited. I've never had much luck with the suited King Queen. I no longer play them. Phillips will try, he calls. Joe Seabock folds, now Peter Eastgate. In the small blind. Ace Jack offsuit. I'm all in. And the defending champ's gonna move all in. Peter Eastgate with 11 big blinds left, pushes with the ace. Eastgate hoping he can get it to heads up, but he doesn't have enough chips to protect his hand. Cop makes the call. Now to Phillips. Phillips will join the party, and so Eastgate's gonna have to beat two players to survive. The defending champ, youngest champ ever, now at risk. All right, three-way to the flop. It is six, ace, four. Eastgate hits his ace to take the advantage. Great flop for Eastgate. Nothing in that flop for the other two to bet. Check. Cop and Phillips both check. The defending champ in good shape to triple up here. Turn card is a jack. Eastgate now with aces up. But big draws out there now. Cop could hit a flush. Phillips could hit a straight. Eastgate's main event life at risk. Check, check again. Peter Eastgate's main event fate hangs on the river. The river card is a heart. Cop hits the flush. Peter Eastgate's title defense is about to end. Still business between Phillips and Cop. Check. I check. They check it down. You got a heart, anyone? No. But Cop shows Peter Eastgate the bad news. And Dennis Phillips will watch his final table mate, Peter Eastgate, take his final bow. What a great, great defense of his title. Peter Eastgate goes out in 78th place. A class act, and he played very well. 
Kopp knocked out two past champs, Joe Hashem and now Eastgate, and that leaves Dennis Phillips as the sole November 9 survivor. From a nobody to nobody can beat this guy, but now Peter Eastgate's extraordinary two-year main event run has finally come to an end, and what a thrilling ride the 2008 world champ gave us all. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Room. Our featured table has broken. Dennis Phillips, who has a little over 1.6 million chips, ended up at a table that now includes Tom Schneider, who's had an up, down, and up day. And the table already had the chip leader, Darvin Moon. So once again, we do have a loaded featured table. I want to be Darvin for a day, particularly this day. It's been every day. It's, it's oh, really? been a run that's unreal. That's Scott Bowman with Chip Envy. This is Darvin's first time in Las Vegas, and to get here, he took his first real jet flight. And since he's been here, he says he has doubled and tripled his stack every day at the main event. DMWD. Don't mess with Darvin. Yeah, <laughs> few big stacks have and failed. Weapons of mass Darvin yeah. is what they should call him. That's chuckled. He, does, he, hasn't, he hasn't met Darvin yet. <laughs> Evidently not. Action on Tom Schneider. On the button. Jack Link's beef jerky pocket cam shows Ace Jack offsuit. And Schneider will raise to 110,000. Phillips with two queens. Dennis Phillips picks up another big hand. And Dennis wants to repop it to 310,000. Now to Darvin Moon in the big blind. Ace King. Another big hand. Two raises in front of Darvin Moon. Two strong players in front of Darvin Moon. Raise. Of course, a re-raise from Darvin Moon. The big stack four bets it, and I can tell you Tom Schneider won't be long for this hand. Moon makes it 675,000 to go. Schneider folds. Weapons of mass Darvin. Now does Dennis Phillips want to tango with Darvin Moon? Dennis with a big hand, but he's out of position against a player that can bust him, and that player just repopped him. Dennis Phillips will call. So it'll be Darvin Moon versus Dennis Phillips, the everyman against the everyman. Here's the flop, eight for ace, Darvin hit his ace. Darvin says he's been running good, and indeed, two aces left in the deck, he hits one. Phillips with pocket queens. He's not gonna commit anything yet, he checks. Darvin reaching for part of his big stack, bet 750,000. That bet would be for most of Dennis Phillips' remaining stack. God, I wish I'd been playing with him for a while. You got seven guys over here talking about how you're catching every card in the deck. I have no idea if you're pushing me around or not. Dennis wishes he had some type of history against Darvin, but he has none. So the old adage, are you going to show me if I fold this? I'll show you. You will show me? Either way. I'd rather you call, but I'll show you. Darvin, very comfortable. All right, I'm going to survive another day. Dennis will retreat and shows his queens. Ace King. Darvin gives away a little information, but maybe he's neighborly. Moon's big stack now even larger. All right, thank you. Ian Phillips, two gentlemen seemingly cut from the same cloth, now sharing the limelight at this featured table. Over to table two. On the button, Phil Ivey called a re-raise from Kent Goulding, who's in the big blind. Now the two are going heads up to the flop. The flop is deuce four, queen. Goulding with a pair of queens. Ivy with a heart flush draw. Goulding with a lot of experience playing backgammon, chess, and slot machines. Check. He checks, top pair. Ivy had tried to steal the blinds. Now he's gonna semi-bluff at it. He'll try to steal this pot. That's enough to put Goulding all in. And with top pair, Goulding says, okay, let's go. Uh-oh. How often do you hear that, Norman? <laughs> Just a queen. Just a queen is good enough. Ivy with just a draw. The best player sometimes is behind. Boy, I do hate hearing Ivy say, uh-oh. Uh oh yeah. All right, Goulding at risk. Turn card is a nine. He's still good, but not out of danger. Well, now Ivy can only knock out Kent Goulding with a river heart. The river card is a heart! <laughs> Ivy rivers the flush to put Kent Goulding on the rail in 77th place. Ivy takes down another victim. Earlier in the main event, he was knocking them out from ahead. Now he's coming from behind. How do you beat this guy? 
Meanwhile, out in the field, one of the two remaining women is at risk, and it's Nicole Pepe who's all in, and she's in a lot of trouble with Jack Four of Hearts against the pocket aces of Adam York. Pepe was short stacked and pushed and ran right into pocket aces. Well, Phil Ivey collected a few hearts on the board. Maybe Pepe can do that to survive. Well, I don't like this guy drinking when he's in the process of knocking out Nicole. It's disrespectful. Nicole's husband has added Julie Schneider to their cheering section. Nicole Pepe looking for something in the flop to give her hope. And now the flop, 7-7, seven, seven, deuce, one heart in there. Uh, but not the flop Nicole Pepe was looking for. It is all but over. Ace is up for York. Turn card is a six, and that's going to do it. Nicole Pepe drawing dead and knocked out at the 2009 main event in 75th place. Great run for Pepe. Boy, she played well. She'll win almost $69,000 for her efforts, and that means that Leo Margetz of Spain is now the last woman remaining in this field. The last two women share a moment of congratulations. Margetz with more work to be done, but for Nicole Pepe, this was by far the finest hour of her tournament poker career. Quite an impressive feat. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. Back in the Rio Poker Room with a leaderboard update, Darvin Moon remains the man to catch with 9.7 million. Phil Ivey in third place with 6.3 million. Antonio Esfandiari still in the top 10. Yes, Prahlad Friedman, who's been short stacked for much of the day, has a chance to double up right now. His pocket tens ahead after the flop against the ace king of Francois Palmiger. Yeah. Palmiger, the poker ball. coach from kids, France. Kids Turn ball. card now. Is a six. Ooh, straight draw? Yeah, Prahlad picks yes. up an irrelevant straight draw. Balmiger can knock out Prahlad Friedman with a river ace or king. The river card. Oh, oh he oh. flinched at the face card, but it's only a queen, and Prahlad Friedman will double up to 1.5 million. Yeah. The French once gave us the Statue of Liberty. Now they give Prahlad the freedom of a double up but he's still only got about half of the chip average. The Jeff Schulman, who's had a very profitable day six here, he's bet 300,000 on the river, action on Hamid Nurofstran. The call, call. Nurofstran makes the call. Schulman shows pocket deuces for a rivered full boat. It appears to me that Jeff Schulman got there on the river. And now he's got 4.7 million. He could use a good shave to a clean-shaven Antonio Esfandiari, who's had a great day of his own. He's in a hand against Andreas Flockstad, who needs help on the river to survive. Esfandiari shields his eyes. Flockstad needs to see a 10. The river card is a queen. Flockstad is gone. Esfandiari does his magic again. Yeah, a good day gets even better for Antonio. And with that elimination, he moves into sixth place overall. Action over now to table two once again. Phil Ivey raised to 110,000 in middle position with Jack 10 off. Ryan Fair called from the button with 10 nine of hearts. Action right now on the small blind. James Aikenhead with ace 10 off suit. Aikenhead re-raises to 390,000. That's a healthy re-raise with ace 10 off from the British pro. And if I may advise Mr. Ivey, let's not ship any more chips unnecessarily overseas. Let's fold and play the next hand. You are Norman Chad. He is Phil Ivey. A re-raise to 990,000. It's a brave new world out there, Lon. My man, against my wishes, just four bet it with Jack 10 off. Fair gets out of the way. Now to Aikenhead. I don't think Aikenhead can call. He's out of position, and he's Phil Ivey. <laughs> Aikenhead with a last glance before the fold. Phil Ivey wins every which way. I gotta tell you, Ivy's got a sixth sense, a seventh sense, multiple senses. He plays better than I do. He brought out the bat on that one. You know I can have a hand once in a while, right? You I'll can, go. but you I'll didn't have, have one that time. Oh. You're the man. His aggressive play paying dividends at table two as he seeks that bracelet, the main event bracelet, which would be his eighth. 
Action here at the featured table on Dennis Phillips. Phillips looks down at pocket aces. He limps in for 40,000. Up from middle position, Dennis in a trapping mood. Darvin Moon, Queen Deuce, he won't play. Action folds to Chris Bach on the button. King eight of clubs. Bach, the uh, Southern California consultant, he used to sell used cars. And with that suited King, a raise to 110,000. Dennis Phillips gets what he wants. Fold that over to Fernando Gordo. Ace Queen offsuit in the big blind. Ace Queen is a loser, sir. I've made this very clear very often this year. But he will call for 70,000. So the Bach re raise back to Phillips. And Dennis and his aces re pop it to 340,000. Dennis waits no longer to spring his trap. I was just kidding. And Bach says, uh, no thanks. <laughs> ah, he's a kidder. Now back to Gordo with Ace Queen. Gordo looks like he's not kidding. Does he really want to play against Phillips re-raise? He says, yep, I will call. Well, you're on your own, sir. I am no longer responsible for your fate. The flop, deuce for deuce. Ace is up for Phillips. That's a very comfortable flop for Dennis Phillips. 1% shot for Gordo. Go on, I'll leave. But all in with Ace Queen. And Phillips with the immediate call. The self-destruction baffles me, Lon. You, you miss the flop completely, and you push all in against a solid player who's got to have a hand. Dennis Phillips on the verge of a 2.6 million chip shot in the arm at the end of day six here. The turn card. Eight of diamonds, and that will end it. Gordo drawing dead and eliminated by Dennis Phillips. Well done. Seven. That's well done. Well done, but Ace Queen is a loser. Gordo out. Phillips aces get paid off. How, how you do that? I don't know. That's just. I don't know. I, I, I play a hell of a lot of hands. Yeah. And then every now and then you have a good one. Another good hand for Phillips keeps his hopes high for completing the incredible feat of back-to-back -back main event final tables. Day six was unkind to many, including Nicole Pepe leaving Leo Margetz as the last woman standing. If I think too much about it, it's like being on a cloud. <laughs> Players' spirits and their stacks are reaching toward the sky. Stack them, stack them, stack them to the top! And no one is stacking them higher than Darvin Moon, and this logger's reputation is spreading like wildfire. Don't mess with Darvin. But today, all eyes were on the reunion of the November 9 duo. And while Peter Eastgate's pursuit of back-to-back -back main event titles came to an end, Dennis Phillips' quest for a return to the final table continues. What could be better? Life is good. Now only 64 players remain, each one step closer to the final table and the most coveted title in poker. Mark my words, I'm going to get there. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. See you next time from the World Series of Poker.